The story begins with some crime news that happens. The world is not really safe for good people to live in, especially when the perpetrator of the crime is caught. But the punishment is not comparable to what was done. And what went viral was the perpetrator of the adult video distribution was only sentenced to three years in prison, while one of the victims decided to suicide. The victim's family suffered severe stress because was constantly threatened by the perpetrator, and in different places Duque is in prison and formed his body muscles. After that, his name was mentioned and allowed to leave prison. With three other prisoners who distributed adult videos, they will go to court to get the results of the appeal. Duque sees that there is coordination with other prisoners, and when he entered the bus, Duque heard that the three perpetrators wanted to repeat the same crime. They wanted to spread adult videos again, because someone paid them a lot. Earlier he got a locker note containing money from their clients. They are very happy, and in order not to go to jail again, they plan to save their adult files to overseas server. Duke and me, then start vocalizing, telling them to fasten their seatbelts. One of them protests, but the others followed him, until finally, the accident happened, the bus overturned, and Duke who had ready, now be able to break free. Duke also helped the three of prisoners to get out of their own handcuffs. After that, Duke asked to leave together. They are confused, but obey him. The luxury taxi come. Duke as the driver, gave those three criminals a ride, and to break the ice, Dukai laughed happily and invited the three them to drink together. After those three people drank, they are unconscious. Duki continued to the next plan. Those three criminals are taken to a place and hear the news about them who are declared to have run away from the bus. They still respond casually because they don't feel like escaping. But one of them is holding a gun belonging to the officer on the bus, making them panic. They don't know why the weapon is on his hand. And now the three criminals are declared fugitives, especially under the law. The action can be sentenced to life want to report the police and explain what really happened, but too late, their whereabouts are already known to the police. Officers arrive to arrest them. The media is busy covering the arrest, they still claim not to want to run away and feel their lives are unfair. From afar, Du Qi, Go Lun, and two technicians observe. Especially in prison later, those three criminals will not calm down. People who have paid them a lot will definitely disturb those three people where Sung Chol on the other side took their customers' money in the locker. Sung Chol also contacted prosecutor Han Na who had helped them. But for the next, Han Na could not help again because of Han Na studied in a distant place. Han Na played by Ezum. After that, Du Qi, Go Lun, and two technicians, and Sung Chol now appreciate each other's performance. They completed the mission again very well. Well, two years ago after solving the last case, Sung Chol thanks to the colleagues who have been willing to help him, such as Du Qi, Go Yun, and the two technicians have their own goals. The luxury taxi service is officially dismissed. At the same time, the police come to the taxi base and conduct raids. After everyone left, the police came to Sung Chol's room. They wanted to find another Sung Chol's subordinate. But Sung Chol confessed if during this time he did it alone. Sung Chol is immediately secured and taken away. One year later, Du Kei came to the taxi headquarters where Sung Chol is currently repairing the car alone and injured. The other driver had questioned Sung Chol who no longer employs other people. The driver suspected that if no one else wanted to work with Sung Chol, because of the one-year incident Sung Chol who was arrested by the police. Even though Sung Chol was acquitted out of all the charges, Sung Chol just reasoned if he likes sports. Du Qi then approaches and helps treat Sung Chol's wound. Sung Chol then remembers the two technicians who used to help him often. But Sung Chol doesn't want the two technicians to come to the headquarters again. Sung Chol wanted them to live well in their own way. Sung Chol not wanting to see the people he cared about suffer anymore. Du Qi also knows the reason why Sung Chol had been cruel to the two technicians when they visited. But Du Qi was confused why he is not expelled, which according to Sung Chol, if Du Qi kicked out, then Du Qi would do the same thing by himself somewhere, instead of letting Du Qi do it alone. Then Sung Chol is better helped. And then Sung Chol told Du Qi to the basement to pick up the lantern, Du Qi obey him, he entered the staff room, and opened a cupboard connected to a simple elevator that could deliver him to the secret basement. There were many memories of the place. On the other side, technicians who worked at the rocket site held a press conference regarding their rocket project that was successfully launched. While in different places, the technician who worked in the car place is also questioned about Pager by his colleague. The technician so remember the memories in Pager until soon. His technician colleague came, and they ate together. The two technicians both had a good life, made a lot of money, and ate well but somehow it feels like something is missing. They are then seeing the crime news again, and the technician at the rocket sites said that if next year he would be transferred to Russia for five years, he got confused whether to say goodbye to Sung Chol or not. Because the last time he came, he was scolded by other technicians as well. Sung Chol was forbade the technician to come again, 
whatever the reason, even forbidden to come to the cemetery when Sung Chol died. But even though Sung Chol doesn't want to see them again, they still want to check how Sung Chol is doing. They also leave. On the other side, Go Yun, who is a police, now takes a leaflet of a missing person who fell down. The man who dropped it didn't seem okay. Go Yun seemed to feel the pain, but her boss stopped her to act further. Go Yun, who is in the police information division, are forbidden by her superiors to interfere in the affairs of other divisions, even if it is against the heart. But Go Yun must obey her. After that, they eat together. Her boss still wants to discuss about the man who lost his child. The boss said that if the man's child did not lost, but ran away from home, they could not reveal an information of people who run away, because it is contrary to the law. The boss suspect that the father and child are involved in domestic violence. But different views from what Golan see, she is seeing the suffering of the father. And if as a police cannot help people in front of the eyes, so what is the purpose of the existence of the police? The half-drunk captain responded with say, if they only follow protocol, if they don't follow protocol, it means they broke the law captain also warning Go Eun so that she can work according to the rules so as not to be evaluated, pay cut, or even fired. On her back home, Go Eun sees luxury taxi, reminding her of Du Kai, while Sung Chol is currently handing out stickers of luxury taxi services in places prone to desperate people. Now the man named Lee, who lost his child now wants to jump off the bridge. He is desperate, but then sees the sticker of the luxury taxi service that he immediately called. After that, Sung Chol contacted Du Ki, who immediately carried out his job. Du Ki picked up Lee, got in the taxi. Du Ki also asked Lee to tell his story. Lee with a crying, tealing in the past when his son was child. Lee lost his wife. Since then, Lee took care of his son alone. Lee loved his son very much, until his son grew up and in college, his son often helped Lee sell food and often missed classes because the lecturer canceled classes. Shortly, Lee is visited by loan sharks and wanted to collect money, but Lee could not pay his debts. And because he always reasoned that he did not have money, loan sharks asked Lee to move out at the end of the month. His son heard that and quite sad, but Lee never showed his sadness in front of his son. Until his son said that if there is an exchange student and would go abroad for two years, his son said to get a scholarship, initially Lee rejecting his son's decision, but his son promises that if the opportunity is limited, and then Lee agrees, he will be happy as long as his son happy, Lee to gives a suit to his son with a name and looks better. Then at the airport, his son gives a smart watch so that Lee can take medicine regularly. After saying goodbye, his son leaves. But soon, Lee feels something strange. His son who contacts him every day, now has no news anymore, and loan sharks who come also suddenly no longer collect money. Lee was confused. The loan sharks also said that if his son has paid the debt, Lee immediately asked his son's friends, and it is only known that his son is leave from college to work. Even the tuition is returned. From what his son's friend knows that his son wants make money in two years, Lee then checked his son's room and found a job contract from an overseas company. Lee felt cheated by his son and upset. Lee wanted to ask his son to stop working and go home immediately, but the message is not sent. Lee intends to come personally to his son's place of work, according to the contract found. The location is in Vietnam, but arriving at the destination, Lee doesn't see anything there, until Lee got the call. Lee heard the voice of his son crying, but the phone is immediately hung up. Lee obviously panicked. He then returned to Korea and reported to the police, Lee showing evidence about the fake company, but the police still said that his son is an adult, and because he had previously admitted to working, so ask Lee to wait. Lee sure something happened. The captain then approached and promised to investigate the case. But Lee being more angry, even the other police did not accept being urged by Lee. The police said that his son deliberately did not call. And the captain then told the truth. The captain explained that since the first report from Lee, they had investigated the case. His son who had called the embassy and did not want Lee to find him. The police could no longer act when an adult refused to be contacted, Lee being angry. The police did not believe his words at all. Lee asserted that there is no father in the world who doesn't know the voice of their child. Lee hear the voice of his own son. And because the police were incompetent to take care of him, Lee decided we'll look for him alone. He started distributing leaflets of his missing son. Now that they know, Lee has been distributing the leaflets for 10 months. But there is no result, and also the police consider his son run away, but not missing. The recording continued. First when Lee returned home, there was a handwritten letter from his son saying that if he wanted to end his life, his son apologized because during his life could not help anything. Lee came again to the police station. The captain also confirmed that if the writing was written by Lee's son, the police also previously received news if actually his son who was in Vietnam was in an illegal gambling place. The captain apologized for bringing bad news. Lee is increasingly incredulous. He is increasingly distributing his leaflets and analyzing the handwriting. Du Ki felt that there is something wrong. 
after his Morse code. Well, in the past, his son had served in the military as a signaler. Duke he then checked the Morse code, which means save me, where at that time his son was tortured elsewhere with people who had previously been promised jobs, the thugs there forcing the people who were beaten to work beyond reasonable limits, making gambling websites that don't know will be beaten. When the thugs leave, his son who sees the phone tries to contact Lee, but the thugs come back and the call is hung up, Lee being more panic. At that time, Lee's son and the others are told to write death warrants, and his son adds more Morse code asking for help. Now, Du Qi and Sung Chol believes if there is someone forced his son to write the letter. Lee then gets an envelope from a luxury taxi, containing instructions to use revenge services. Lee come into the photo booth, and after inserting the coin, an instructions appear. Faced with the choice of revenge or not, Lee remembered for memories with his son. Lee immediately chose revenge. After that, Du Qi and Sung Chol start their action. Duki drives his luxury taxi, but some equipment is no longer maintained and must be controlled manually. Sung Chul is also the same. Going with an undercover watch's repair car, they are going to where Lee submitted his job resume before. But when arrive at the location, an office in Korea, it is also fake. Sung Chul will check for suitable vacancies, but Sung Chul's work took quite a long time. Back to the headquarters, they finally manage to find a job vacancy. Duki has submitted a resume and will work like Lee's son. Sung Chul is obviously worried because Du Qi will go to Vietnam alone, but Du Qi has no other choice. The next day, Du Qi starts to leave. Sung Chul is still worried because they haven't arranged much plan. Sung Chul asks Du Qi immediately return so that they can immediately determine the right plan to save Lee's son and also yawn the crime that occurred. While two technicians now come to the taxi headquarters but doesn't seem Sung Chul's presence, entering Sung Chul's room. Sung Chul's phone also cannot be contacted, and they believe there is a leaflet in Sung Chul's desk drawer. As far as they know the desk drawer Sung Chul only filled with important items. Two technicians knew that Sung Chul is investigating a missing persons case. They came to the underground base, but there is no one. The luxury taxi was still there, making them confused, and then Sung Chul come. At first, welcoming the arrival, but turned angry. Sung Chul chased the two technicians away and asked not to come again. The technician who worked on the rocket also said that if he wanted to say goodbye because he will go to Russia for five years, but Sung Chul still doesn't care. He ignored the two technicians who left. Sung Chul really felt bad, too rude with the two technicians, while the two technicians also realized if Sung Chul is like hiding something. On the other side, Du Qi has arrived in Vietnam. Sung Chul is still very worried, especially now they are only two and Du Kai in Vietnam alone, but Du Qi makes sure that will be fine. Sung Chul then turn on the computer. Inside the Duke airport, needs. there are pickups who will take Du Kai and other workers. Du Qi wearing an advanced glasses that can be seen all the way to Sung Chul. Du Qi is sure that the pickups deliberately picked up outside to avoid surveillance cameras. After that, they depart. Du Qi with two new workers. While Sung Chul is enough slow to find information from what Du Qi got, on the other side, two technicians tell Go Eun about their suspicions to Sung Chul, seeing a leaflet of Lee, Go Eun confused, but Go Eun has to go back to work. So two technicians feel bad if they have to disturb Go Yun. The two technicians also plan to handle cases that are Sung Chul face. Go Yun also try to check Lee's son case again. With the system in her division, she is checking the departure at the airport, and there is Du Qi's name. Go Yun is even more suspicious. In Vietnam, Du Qi is still communicated with Sung Chul and explaining what he knew. Du Kai still wanted to know where the original office is located. The trip is continue, but ride an open car because there was a problem with the other car. But before that, the phone was confiscated on the grounds that it would be replaced with a special Vietnamese SIM provider. They passed through the countryside far from the city center, and suddenly another car blocking, the thugs carrying weapons and holding all passengers captive, their heads closed. Sung Chul panicked even more because he doesn't hear news from Du Qi, who now is hanging upside down. Du Qi sees other workers injured, after that, Du Qi is put down. The thugs seeing workers resumes are quite good. The thugs also ordered to create a gambling site. If do not answer or say no, then will be tortured, the other workers, and then come with their work. After that, they are taken to their each rooms. Du Qi's glasses are left. Elsewhere, a woman named Mrs. Lim throws a knife at Du Qi's photo. In the first season of Mrs. Lim is a fraud boss who fell in love to Du Qi. But now, being hates because Du Qi is the one who ruining her life. And then the scene shows that Sung Chul has difficulty with his computer, and when he wants to ask Go Hyun, Go Hyun happens to call. But Sung Chul is still sassy and forbids Go Un contacting him. Go Hyun then asks Sung Chul to press the white button near the computer. Sung Chul does it. Go Hyun immediately asks what he is doing in his seat. Sung Chul is trying to dodge. Go Hyun convinced that Sung Chul is in the secret room and doing something. Sung Chul hang up. 
Meanwhile, two technicians come to the police station and are shown Lee's case documents, but when the two technicians want to ask for a copy of the document, the police refuse, no matter how hard the technician is forcing. The police to still refuse. It makes one of the technicians pretending to be someone who knew Captain. He admitted that he often had dinner with the captain and would report the police's behavior to the captain which made him even arrested because the captain always had dinner with other policemen. While the technician managed to get a copy of the case, only the document was taken again by the police, thinking that their plan has failed, but his friend had apparently taken pictures of the document before they even talked to the police, the detained technician being more upset because what he did was just useless and landed him in jail. In Vietnam, Du Ki is locked in a room and told to work who Du Ki knew. That room is a prison. There is a book about making websites from workers previously, containing a record of misery during life there. The previous worker just wanted to back home. Du Ki then heard a commotion, and seeing if there is worker who tried to escape, it's just the thugs casually doesn't chase him. The worker who ran away now ran to a restaurant that happened to be run by Koreans. He also asked for help contact the embassy who is immediately assisted. The next day, Sung Chul is still confused about his computer, until by pressing a button that made things even more chaotic, Go Eun then present makes Sung Chul confused. The technician also appointment met at the airport, they will go to Vietnam together. The main purpose is to finding and helping Du Ki. Du Ki also secretly be able to escape from his room. He checked around and then heard the thugs chatting. They discussed about their gambling site project, which is sure to make them richer. But then a knocking sound was heard. On that occasion, Du Ki took his glasses. It turned out that the coming person is the thug's boss, carrying the worker who ran away. That worker then tortured, and then Du Ki going back around and reconnected with Sung Chul. But the one who responded is Go Eun. Go Hyun was confused, and she is immediately worried about Du Ki. Du Ki also pointed his glasses camera. For now what Du Ki knows if in that place, the thugs forced an illegal gambling program to be made. The thugs could not do it in Korea. So they offer jobs abroad specifically for engineering students. Du Ki also not yet found Lee's son. Du Ki can't go out alone leaving another workers. Du Ki current plan is to ask for help to Go Hyun making a program. On the other side, two technicians have also arrived in Vietnam and going to the lodging place. It's just that when they entered, they immediately came out because of the Mrs. Lim inside. The two technicians observed from afar. Mrs. Lim still involved in crimes and beat up man which annoyed her. The two technicians are even more scared and decided to look for another place. But they are confused because their suitcases and their valuable stuff were left in Mrs. Lim's place. The next day, the thugs come to Dookie's place who had relaxed. He had completed his task of making a gambling website and it worked well. The thugs are very happy and directly showing to their boss. They praise the greatness of Du Ki who claimed to have worked at Udata Company too. But then the program doesn't work anymore. The boss is upset and Du Ki then blamed the thug who according to him changed the code he had made. The thug denied it, but Du Kai still accused them. Du Ki annoyed because the program was running well but was damaged by the thugs who makes the thugs annoyed. The boss stopped and asked Du Ki to remake the program. The thugs also given another task, they would cut the leg for the person who previously wanted to escape. The person doesn't move, and Du Ki immediately stopped. Du Ki said that if the person to be harmed is a graphic design, Du Ki needed that person to complete the program. The thug disagrees, but the boss agrees to Du Ki's request. They leave. The boss now is angry with the thug who always messes things up and doesn't think long. Du Ki and two new workers then enter the room where the other two workers now will leave. Du Ki feels strange and immediately told to work. Du Ki then make the two new workers calm down and also asking for help, while Go Hyun and Sung Chol now is drinking coffee together. Ji Hyun actually a bit upset because Sung Chol didn't contact her from the beginning, but now she is happy to be able to rejoin the luxury taxi service. Strangely, Go Hyun did not get any more news from the two technicians who previously came to her where the two technicians are currently riding in a chicken car and began to doubt whether they would succeed in finding Du Ki. They are also hungry because they hadn't eaten yet. Back to Du Ki. The thug seeing the three workers at work were Du Ki apparently going around. The thug who is still curious about Du Ki's program then inserted Du Ki's flash drive into his computer. That's when Go Eun could get much more data. Du Ki also takes a taxi and Go Eun just to find out that the thug boss is a fugitive from Interpol and finds out that the taxi he drives is not reasonable. Du Ki protested, but the driver said that the taxi is a luxury taxi, and it is a reasonable price, because continued to protest, they also threatened him, and after that they are immediately beaten by Du Ki, and then Du Ki took over the car, and leave with that taxi. 
Go Hyun and Do Ki managed to find the whereabouts of the Korean pickup first, and got into Do Ki's taxi. That person called the Korean embassy and wanted to confirm the missing person report. He claimed to be a missing person and asked the embassy not to spread the report again because he actually ran away from home and doesn't want his family came out knowing his whereabouts and realized that if the direction of the road was wrong, he protested to Do Ki. After that, he is immediately tied in front of the car. He would be hit into the stone and very scared. Dookie asked to be told where Lee's son is, but because he doesn't want to say it, he is threatened again. He also admitted that if he only picked up people from Korea and doesn't know where the workers go, what he knows is there are about five teams operating in the illegal business, but often overhauled at will according to the center's wishes. Dookie wants to know the whereabouts of the head office, but the man also doesn't know. Dookie took the person's phone and let the person be tied up on a deserted street. Dookie is going by drive a taxi car, and the two technicians who were already like crazy met with Dookie. They are so happy and treated to a meal. The two technicians told the reason for coming to Vietnam. Go Wian, who is seeing from afar, so knew why the two technicians were difficult to contact. They claimed to meet Mrs. Lim, make the Dookie also confused. But after that, Dookie had a plan and then Du Ki come to Mrs. Lim's place. He would reveal the place of the boss's thugs by using Mrs. Lim. Du Ki then changed his clothes into a figure that Mrs. Lim recognized. Mrs. Lim remembered Du Ki was the one who used to make her fall in love. Mrs. Lin was awkward. She is misbehaving, but Du Ki did not approach her, and after giving a paper to a man, Du Ki left in his taxi car. Mrs. Lin was ignored. Mrs. Lin become more and more anxious killed Du Ki. She is still upset with Du Ki who used to mess up her life. Mrs. Lim asked his men to find out what is he doing in that place, which turned out to be Duki ordered two crates of liquor to be delivered to an address. Elsewhere, the thug's subordinate are beaten one by one. Duki then returned to his place again, and the next day, the other thugs were upset because the person who picked up the new worker could not be contacted. After that, a commotion was heard. Mrs. Lim and her men are ready to attack the place, according to Duki's address last night. The thugs who were not ready being attacked and outnumbered were obviously panicked. Mrs. Lim get ready to hurt Du Ki. Du Ki also sent a message from the phone of pickup for the thugs to run and come to the head office out of concern if their activities are exposed, so that the thugs took the workers away. Mrs. Lim's men also managed to enter and started attacking, Mrs. Lim asking her men to look for the most handsome hooligan. Du Ki and other workers are told to leave, and Mrs. Lim was late. She is unsuccessful found Du Ki's whereabouts. She is very upset and realized in one room there is warm coffee and glasses that Mrs. Lim believing belong to Du Ki. Mrs. Lim confused why Du Ki hurt her feelings. Elsewhere, Du Ki and other workers taken by the thugs to a place called the office center, many workers from other teams in that place, and all of them are seriously injured tortured. They are then faced with a boss who is annoyed with thugs for bringing to the place without his permission. Until finally their leader appeared, Go Hyun recognized the man as her own captain. Go Eun really didn't expect that the police captain who handled the case is a criminal boss. All this time, he pretended to be a good person. After that, the workers were told to go elsewhere and told to write a suicide letter. The letter will be sent to the families of the workers. Du Ki then meets the son of Lee who is helpless. The workers are forced to obey to write and Du Ki doesn't want to do it. He starts to make a sound and the thug boss is upset because Du Ki dares to refute. Du Ki gets up and explains if the workers come there to work and help their family not treated casually. After that, Duki started the fight. One against several people Duki faced, the thugs there unable to defeat Duki. After conquering the thugs, Duki found someone else's password that previously promised to go home. Duki then released the other workers. After that, other thugs reported the riot that occurred. So that other men are deployed, the fight continues. After defeating the boss of thugs, Duki chased the captain of police who run away. Two technicians also come and disguise themselves as Vietnamese policemen. The motorcycle is taken over by Duki to chase the police captain. Go Eun gives an instructions on where the police captain going, until Duki crashes his motorbike, making the captain's car no longer able to drive. The captain still wants to run away, and Duki chased him, until the police captain pointed his gun and asked who Duki is. The captain even more confused, because Duki recognized him as a police, the captain also said that catching criminals in Korea is useless, because in the end, the criminals could live better. Duki is upset, because this captain covered up the truth and even committed crime. So the captain wanted to shoot Duki. A sound of the shot ensued, Go Hyun panicked, but what was shot was the captain, there was a bullet from afar, which Duki himself did not know who shot him. The police come, and the mission that time raised many questions, the workers are finally evacuated, criminals are also secured. Du Kai and the team succeeded, although many irregularities were still so the question. Back to Korea, Du Ki drove Lee's son to meet Lee who really did not expect his son to come back.
He is really happy. The child who had no news so far, now returned to the house. The gambling site that was managed had also stopped by Go Yun. Du Qi then stopped the taxi service. The next day, Go Yun resigned as a police. She would work at her old place. Luxury taxi service is reopened. Two technicians have also resigned from that job. Outside, there is a man named Ha Jun who comes to the office. He will apply to be a taxi driver. Sung Chol, the two technicians, Go Yun and Du Qi will return to action. And then the scene shows Du Qi runs a taxi and the passengers are his old friend when he was in the military. Du Qi drove his friend to the special forces headquarters. His friend is very happy to meet Du Qi again. And when he arrived, his friend offered Du Qi to return to the military. But Du Qi now is comfortable become taxi driver. Other troops come to train with a whistle that make Du Qi have a panic attack. He is difficulty breathing. The sound of the whistle is like the sound of boiling water when his mother died first. After that, Du Qi buy a whistle and ask the kids to blow it. Du Qi will buy ice cream to the two children. But Du Qi is too scared to hear. He is not ready. Du Qi is difficult to find a way to overcome his fear of hearing that sound. Du Qi doesn't try. Soon, the call from Sun Chol reports going to Vietnam and investigates the bullet that pierced the police captain and actually from Korea. There are other people in the crime scene they don't know who. Sun Chol going alone. At the headquarters, the two technicians and Go Yun also tries to design a new tool that can be used for luxury taxes. In Vietnam, Sung Chol comes disguised as a police detective and checks the location of death police captain. Sung Chol sure if the shot was not a missed shot from police captain's men, but indeed aimed at police captain, back to Korea. Du Ki is also confused. Apparently there are other people who want the police captain to die. The police will not investigate the case because the victims have also survived. Sung Chol feels something is stuck, but Du Kai still tries to calm down. At the same time, Ha Jun is faced Go Yun who wants to ask for a deposit record that day, but Ha Jun refuses and even forbids Go Yun to check inside. Ha Jun himself will be give it later. Go Yun obey and then go. Ha Jun greet other officers and Du Ki who passes directly Ha Jun asks for help. Ha Jun showing scratches on the car and afraid that later Sung Chol will get angry, but Du Ki gives a solution to cover it with a pen. Ha Jun so very grateful and then go. And then a grandmother shown at the train station gets closer to the tracks. There are signs that the train is approaching, and the grandmother has surrendered, but then seeing the sticker of the luxury taxi service, the call starts and the luxury taxi appears. Du Qi immediately picks up the grandmother at the train station. Du Qi gives the luxury taxi envelope and asks the grandmother to explain everything. The grandmother is crying and the grandmother said that if there used to be young man who came to entertain the villagers, the young man sang while distributing brochures and the products they sell, the hospitality and attention they gave to the surrounding villagers, made them accepted very quickly, especially the villagers were mostly parents, but when the grandmother left, other villagers began to gossip and pity for the grandmother whose her child is busy in the city and has not come home for a year. The news says that if her child has business problems, one of her grandchildren is also sickly. A con artist named Sang Gai then approaches the grandmother who takes care of the food. She can't help buying the products. To repay the kindness of Sang Gai and the other young men, the grandmother helped to clean up. Sang Gai then invited to take a picture together. And after that there is a raffle that Sang Gai held, and the winner of the lottery was the grandmother who was confused, because she was told to pay taxes and fill out further forms. The grandmother refused, because she had no money. The grandmother immediately left, and since then, she has never come again to the festival. But Sang Gai still came and approached the grandmother. He treated the grandmother as if his own mother. The grandmother admitted that she did not come because she could not buy the goods that Sang Gai sell. Sang Jai helped the grandmother sell, making grandma's merchandise sell well. After that, the grandmother took Sang Gai to her house and ate together. Sang Jai showing a photo of his five-year-old child, just like her grandchild Oh. But Sang Gai admitted that his child is sick, and he couldn't go to the hospital, often because he had to work extra. The grandmother is even more sorry for Sang Gai who tried to be okay. After that, Sang Gai come home and invited the grandmother to come again at another time to see his appearance, and Sang Gai's figure reminded her of her own child. After that, the grandmother took out her savings money that she was supposed to use to see a doctor. The next day, grandma come to Sang Jai and wanted to buy something. Sang Jai refused and asked the grandmother to keep the money, but then instead of giving the money, Sang Jai asked the grandmother to register a credit card. By registering a credit card, Sang Gai admitted that would get a small commission. And because of that way who can help Sang Gai, the grandmother is willing to do it. Actually, the grandmother is hesitant, but in front of Sang Gai, she claims to be fine.
Sang Gai also invites the grandmother to come again to the place of sale the next day. From Go Yun knows that Sang Gai has no child at all. After hearing from neighbors that the grandmother has distant child and sick grandchild, Sang Jia positioning himself as if he had something in common with grandmother's child, so that the grandmother felt sorry. The recording continued. The next day, the grandmother who wanted to sell seaweed met Sang Gai who asked the grandmother for help guarding his shop for a while. Sang Gai take permission to eat, and the grandmother doesn't mind at all. After that, the grandmother began to sell things of Sang Gai. The neighbors buy it, and after finish for eating, Sang Jia come again and wanted to buy all the seaweed of the grandmother. The grandmother obviously refused, but Sang Gai forced, and reminded if with that money can buy the grandchild the toys when visiting. The grandmother obey him, other customers come, and the grandmother will continue to stay at the store. Let Sang Ji continue his rest. On another day, rain fell. Sang Gai and his friend left the merchandise to grandma's place. The grandmother doesn't mind at all. And after the Sang Jai left and the rain had subsided, the neighbors protested bringing merchandise and got angry at grandma. They'd wanted their money back because the things they bought were all damaged. The grandmothers were obviously confused because the villagers should have protested to Sang Gai and his friend. They then come to the place who Sang Jai selling and Sang Gai who had run away somewhere. There is a police who also appointed the grandmother as the seller of these items. The neighbors blamed the grandmother for selling damaged goods. The grandmother then going to giving her statement to the police station. She got more confused when the police said that all the merchandise was bought by the grandmother herself using a credit card. The grandmother doesn't understand, she doesn't feel that she is doing this. But whatever the grandmother tries to explain about the actual incident, the evidence states that the grandmother is the main suspect, especially many villagers seeing Sang Jai is giving money to the grandmother. The villagers continue to protest, and the police ask for the grandmother's child to be brought. The grandmother obviously unable to contact her child just like that. The grandmother is increasingly afraid that her child must not know that bad things happen to her. The grandmother is sorry for her child who is in the city and works hard, must be disturbed because of her actions. She asked for punished herself. The grandmother really didn't understand, until Sang Jia contacted and admitted that he had been framed the grandmother. Sang Gai doesn't feel guilty at all. He lived very well by being a parasite for a weak person. The grandmother's pain was completely indifferent by Sang Gai. He even suggested that if the grandmother doesn't want to contact her child for fear of becoming a burden, then the grandmother could die in debt. The call was terminated, and Sang Dai enjoyed his life again. After that, the grandmother decides to end her life, but she sees the sticker of luxury taxi service. Some Chul and his team suspecting that Sang Gai and his friend are deliberately targeting the elderly who live alone and do not want their child to be involved in any activities. Now, Sung Chul and his team arranges a plan to avenge the grandmother. They all agree to punish Sang Gai and his entourage. The grandmother then put coins from the luxury taxi service into the public phone, and after hearing the instructions for revenge or not, the grandmother remembers the incident after being deceived by Sang Gai. She was called by the bank because she could not pay the credit card bill. The bank will file a lawsuit to the court, and if that happens, the grandmother's family will knows and the child who will be told to pay off the debt. The grandmother has no other choice. She chooses to take revenge for what Sang Gid done to her. Du Ki, then with his luxury taxi began to act, Go Yun, and the two technicians also helped. First, Du Ki and two technicians come to the place where the distributor of electronic goods sell. Du Ki seeing Sang Gai and his friends, others were moving electronics they bought from closed stores and using cash transactions. Du Ki continued his journey, and the next day, in another village, Sang Gai and his party committed fraud again by repeating the same scenario. Two technicians pretending to be villagers there. Sang Di's arrival is very friendly and entertaining the villagers made him quickly accepted by the surrounding community. When eating together, Sang Gai taking pictures with their target, and what happened next is the lucky draw. The winner is the man who had previously taken a photo with Sang Gai. He is very happy. The winner had to submit personal data as administration, and after getting the winner's data, they would send the documents to other criminals who collaborated with them. But from Go Ungot, there are six mobile phones in the name of the grandmother used by the fraudsters. They subscribe to SIM cards which are all from the credit card belonging to the grandmother. Du Ki then planned to meet other criminals who collaborated with Sang Gai, where the location is in a mobile phone counter that is not at all friendly to their customers. There have been many victims of fraud that they have been snared, and by using the phone in the name of the grandmother, their names are still safe. Payments also use the grandmother's credit card, and for the next target is the old man who was previously taken a picture by Sang Gai. They are very happy because they will get more money, but soon, Du Ki appears claiming to be a customer. The people there are confused because Du Ki enters from the back door, but because Du Ki is a customer, they will serve Du Ki who wants to cancel his subscription of the grandmother. Seeing the document Du Ki brought belongs to the grandfather who just won the lucky draw, they want to know who Du Ki really is. 
Their boss said that if the subscription fee could not be canceled, they still underestimated Du Kai, and the other subordinates were called. Du Kai immediately attacked, and the fighting still Du Kai who dominated. After everyone fell, Du Kai installed a flash drive on the main computer, which immediately Go Yun checked further. Du Kai then burned the victim's documents. Go Yun also succeeded cancel the entire SIM card subscription. And after that, Du Kai left. On the other side, Sang Jai confused and annoyed with the counter owner who could not be reached. Sang Gai then planning to go to the Shana because he hated the smell of parents, while Du Kai now started doing surveys for the next plan. At the same time, Sung Chul explained about the Blue Bird Foundation, which still often helps victims of crime. But for now some Foundation supporters take back their donations. The committee present is confused whether they should continue the project of Sung Chul, but Sung Chul will try to cover other costs. The meeting ended, a tow car carrying a taxi car which when Sung Chul approached, apparently Ha Jun who had an accident, he is still fine and willing to pay the repair costs from his salary. But Sung Chul did not mind. He even asks if Ha Jun is injured? Sung Chul tells Ha Jun to come to the hospital immediately. Ha Jun is quite confused and thanks. Sung Chul then drives him to the hospital, while two technicians now make an undercover car as a place to peddle merchandise. Back to Sangai, they will go to the sauna. It's just that their car suddenly broke down. They are upset. Their journey is still far away, and it is impossible to contact insurance until they heard the herd of a tractor engine heading towards them, driven by Duki disguised as a village youth. And then Duki approached Sang Gai who looked like he had a problem with his car. They then asked the location of the repair shop that Duki explained that the distance of the workshop is not so close from there. After being told the location of the workshop, Duki then going to continue his disguise as village youth, and then Sang Jai ordered his two friends to push the car until to the workshop according to Duki's instructions previously. Sang Jai is even more surprised because the person who works at the workshop is Duki. Sang Jai is upset because Duki didn't tow his car at all. But Duki reasoned that if Sang Jai didn't ask for help, Sang Jai then told Duki to fix the car immediately. But Duki refused because there are many queues of cars that he had to fix first. Sang Jai also intended to bribe so that his car could be done faster. But Duki still refused until Sang Jai's friend asked for help because they are in a hurry. They admitted that they had to perform for the elderly. And because Duki considered Sang Jai's affairs and his friends for the common interest of entertaining the elderly, Duki agreed to immediately repair his car. Du Qi's immediately rushed over, and Go Yun knew that Sang Gai would act in the afternoon. In the afternoon, Sang Jai and the others also perform in front of the elderly, Go Yun, and the two techniques who knows the target of Sang Gai. So exchanges lucky draw numbers, so that the one who gets the lucky draw at that time is one of the technicians who makes Sang Jai confused. Sang Gai will hold a lucky draw once again later, and invite the villagers to eat together. The next target then photographed, and one of the technicians exchanges the lucky draw numbers, so that in the next lucky draw, the technician who win made Sang Kei feels that his friends are incompetent to work. Sang Gai also arranged his fraud plan again. The next day, they helped promote the sale of the grandfather, which is the target of their scam earnestly. Until Sang Jai even tell about his sad life story. And because he was given sad stories, the grandpa would help Sang Jai, but Sang Jai asked his help with ask the grandfather to buy his products with a credit card. Sang Jai asks his friend to spend the entire credit card limit of the grandfather. But Du Qi appears and pretends to be interested in his merchandise, his friend who tries to transaction his fails. Because previously, Du Qi had a device that could turn off all nearby transactions. So now the machine cannot be used as long as Du Qi is nearby. Sang Gai who is still looking for a way, and Du Qi keep disturbing until their machine falls and cannot longer be used. Du Qi immediately leave and Sang Gai who shows his real behavior try to hold by his other friends. At the same time, Ha Jun goes to the base and tries to contact Go Yun, but there is no answer. Ha Jun then finds a key and then approaches to the customer who lost the wallet in the car. Ha Jun will look for the lost wallet. He entered a special staff room that he had never entered. Then when he opened the cupboard, the shelf there backwards which made Ha Jun confused. Ha Jun also sees the button that when he wanted to press. Some Chul come to surprise him. Ha Jun explained, if he is looking for a customer's wallet left in the taxi and some Chul will look for it. Ha Jun who confused and chose to leave. Back to village, Sang Jai and the other friends are still serving the elderly. While observing which target is suitable for them to deceive in the car, Go Hyun is confused about the location of Sang Gai and his friends keep the money because it is not recorded in any bank. Du Qi is sure if the money is hidden somewhere. In another time, Sang Gai's car cannot longer turn on, they then call the insurance emergency line aimed at Go Hyun. Soon, Du Qi comes as a village youth who claims to be a member of the emergency call in the village. Sang Gai and friends obviously does not believe it and confused if Du Qi is the person in charge of insurance in the surrounding area, why didn't he help him before? Sang Gai very upset, 
but Du Kai doesn't care at all. He immediately wanted to work, and Sang Sang Jai wanted to attack. Detained by other friends, in short, his car was towed, and on the way, Du Qi stopped because there is a grandfather he would help. The grandfather is Sung Chul in disguise. Du Qi advised Sung Chul not to be alone, and Sung Chul who wanted to give money. Du Qi refused. Du Kenny always said if the ride is free, and Sung Chul doesn't have to pay anything. And after knowing that Sung Chul had also lived abroad, the fraudsters also had a new target. They are friendly with Sung Chul which made Sung Chul want to give money. But Du Qi forbade him because Sung Chul could not pay anyone. They helped Sung Chul. After delivering Sung Chul, Du Qi continued the journey. Then the fraudsters come to Sung Chul's house. Because there is no the presence of people there, they also investigated who turned out that Sung Chul have a car and an expensive golf club as firewood. They are increasingly convinced that Sung Chul is a rich man. Many other expensive treasures they found and soon Sung Chul appeared. He had a pile of money which he throws. Sung Chul as if inviting others to talk who Sang Gai and the others who don't know what they mean. They then go home and Sang Gai accidentally sees the signboard of the leader Bake, who after that he searched on the internet, Sang Jai even more unexpectedly, because the villain named Leader Bake has a lot of money that cannot be traced her whereabouts by the police. And it is known that Sung Chul took documents related to funds belonging to the leader Bake, which made Sang Jai sure if Sung Chul was not just anyone. At other times, Sang Jai approached Sung Chul and invited to chat, but Sung Chul ignored him, and then Sang Jai perform. Sung Chul come, but not interested at all. Sung Chul decided to leave. At night, Sang Gai back home, and his two friends were already investigating about Sung Chul. They did not find any documents about the funds embezzled by Leader Bake, but his two friends knew where Sung Chul hid his belongings. They are sure that what was hidden was valuable. So the next day, they followed Sung Chul, Du Qi from afar observing, and when Sung Chul and the others left, the two technicians searched the whereabouts of the treasure stored by Sang Gai, but they did not find it. And Sang Gai is also deceived by Sung Chul who apparently only dug up vegetables because the money saved was not found. Du Qi had plans again. The next day, Sang Gai come to Du Qi and wanted to check his car. Sang Jai wanted to know more about Sung Chul, but Du Qi pretended not to know anything and because Sang Gai thought if Sung Chul had land, Du Qi is like-minded, according to him. Sung Chul could be have land because he often put a red sign on a piece of land which usually only signifies land ownership and other people are prohibited from entering without permission, Sang Jai even more happy. After that, with his two friends, they found land that had red flags, they convinced that the land belonged to Sung Chul who used to store treasures. But as long as they dug, found nothing, and not only on one side, the red flag also in another place. But Sang Jai still did not get anything. After that, Sang Gai come to Du Qi and annoyed because apparently the land planted with the red flag did not belong to Sung Chul. But Du Qi never said if Sung Chul owning the land. Sang Jai is getting more angry, and Du Qi is confused why Sang Ji keeps asking about Sung Chul's land. That Sang Gai admits if he is worried about Sung Chul who often farms alone. Sang Gai will be the first to help Sung Chul if something happens. But Du Qi asks Sang Gai not worry because Sung Chul has never farmed. Sung Chul usually borrows a tractor from him. Du Qi only takes the tractor and leaves at the place where Sung Chul ordered. Sang Gan more sure if Sung Chul's treasure is stored there. Moreover, Sung Chul doesn't want to say what is done to Du Kai. Sang Jai immediately wants to borrow Du Qi's tractor. In a place that often to visited by Sung Chul, Sang Jai gives money and his attitude being very good to Du Qi. After that Du Qi agreed to help him. He drives his big tractor and Sang Gai and his other friends followed on the way. Du Qi communicate with Go Yun. They felt strange because Sang Jai didn't have much money before. But his money suddenly became a lot. Especially there is no ATM nearby. Du Qi would check something. After arriving at the location, Du Qi left his tractor and Sang Jai. After Du Qi far away, Sang Gai and his friends took an action to start digging. They found there is an object embedded. They are happy and check the contents inside it. But the contents were dirt that made them nauseous. So they wanted to dig somewhere else. But the tractor engine cannot turn on. Sang Gai also confused and getting annoyed which even makes the tractor engine problematic. Then they see Sung Chul passing by with the goods brought. Sang Gai and his friends so happy and following Sung Chul's departure. At night, Du Qi comes to Sung Chul's place, which is prevented by Sang Gai. Du Qi who wants to give the food to Sung Chul, is blocked by Sang Gai and forced to leave. Sang Gai and his friends who will replace Du Qi's task. Du Qi then leave. Go Lian worried if Sung Chul not okay. Sang Gai and his two friends forced Sung Chul to tell him where Sung Chul hid the treasure. But Sung Chul doesn't speak at all. He doesn't respond to Sang Gai and his friends. The next day, Sung Chul hugged a tree and asked for help to Du Qi because he was followed for 24 hours by Sang Gai and his friends. Du Qi asked Sung Chul to watch the show. 
and Go Mian then persuaded to sing, Go Yun refused, even two technicians couldn't persuade her. And then Du Qi talked to Go Yun and confirmed that Go Yun is the only one they had at the moment, and finally Go Yun agreed. Sang Jai even confused why Sung Chol suddenly wanted Sang Jai put on a show, and the one who sang is a girl, and then Go Un showed up and she is going to sing, and the show started, she entertained everyone there. And Sung Chol then took out her $100 to Go Yun. After the perform, Go Yun got paid. Sang Jai who wanted to take her $100. Absolutely Go Yun protest. And because she knows if Sung Chol seemed interested in Go Yun, Sang Jai has another job for Go Yun. Go Yun then is told to accompany Sung Chol, and Sung Chol then gives Go Yun the keys of his luxury car. Sang Gay from a distance trying to think positively, if later Go Yun can give information on where Sung Chol keeps his treasures, and soon Go Yun arrives by driving Sung Chol's car. They stop the pace of Go Yun who says that Sung Chol has given the car. Go Yun also resigns and returns the wages to Sang Gai. Sang Jai obviously doesn't accept and asks for the car to be given to him. Go Lian also said if she knows of bad intentions of Sang Gai, now she has got information about Sung Chol's treasure. Go Yun leave, and Sang Jai is getting annoyed. They also chase Go Yun. They will take the clue of the treasure that is Sung Chol given. It was overwhelmed chasing and Du Qi, then come to cut off the chase. Sang Jai is even more unacceptable. But no matter how hard he tried to drive Du Qi away, so as not to block the way, the result was in vain. Go Lian had gone too far. And after successfully getting ahead of Du Qi, they chased Go Yun again. But when he managed to find Go Yun's car, Go Yun there is no there anymore. Go Yun left the map of her treasure and convinced it frightened so she ran away. And in the midst of this unfocused, their car backed up by itself, they tried to chase so that the car did not fall. But it was useless. The car to plunge into the cliff and immediately destroyed. An explosion occurred and Sang Jai is really sad. He doesn't accept the car destroyed. Well previously, Du Kei already suspicious of Sang Jai's car. So along with two technicians, they also checked the car and managed to find a pile of money with a large amount and gold bars, treasure from the fraud they got. And when Sang Jai off guard by looking at the treasure map, Du Qi reversed the car so that now it fell from the abyss and destroyed. Sang Jai and lost his car, then Du Qi come and pretend to be confused by what happened. After that, Du Qi asked Sang Chol to act for the last time. Sang Gai who doesn't want to lose, then blocking Sung Chol's trip, Sang Gai threatened to kill Sung Chol if Sung Chol doesn't tell him the location of the treasure stored. Sung Chol still doesn't want to say anything, and try to escape. Sung Chol is not a big problem at all. They are sure if Sung Chol's departure instead took them to the treasure that Sung Chol burial, they followed Sung Chol towards the cliff. But after that, Sung Chol threw himself down. Sang Gai's fiends obviously panicked and scared, but Sang Jai even laughed because now who knows the treasure belonging to Sung Chol only the three of them, two Sang Gai's friends run away, and Sang Jai is getting crazy with his ambition to get rich with Sung Chol's treasure. Sung Chol be able to save, and Sang Gai's friends who wanted to escape, blocking Du Qi's luxury taxi, they asked to be taken away, but Du Qi took them to the waterfront, and tied up and could not go anywhere. Meanwhile now Sang Gai found a place according to the map, Du Qi observed for a moment and left together with Go Yun and the two technicians. They would letting Sang Gai search for treasure. All will end if Sang Jai finds the treasure. And actually the place has no treasure at all. Sang Gai has lost treasure because his car caught fire, his friends leave. Sung Chul also considered dead, and the only way Sang Jai can escape from the reality is to look for treasure that doesn't actually unsexist. Getting worse the situation is getting stronger temptation and greed to search for treasure. But the red flags that are widely scattered in that place actually indicate mines and military. Sang Jai stepped on it, and now panicked, he could not leave and will to die, the mission is successful. The next day, Sung Chol and the team helped the villagers to fix the broken goods. The grandmother who deceived has also got back her money, the problem of deceiving is over. The grandmother will not be entangled in cases anymore, soon, her grandchild and her child come. Du Qi is happy because grandma's life is getting better, and Du Qi then stops his taxi service. They appreciate each other's performance at night. Ha Jun who are going to the taxi headquarters, curious about the special staff room that before he came. Ha Jun tried to check it again and opened the cabinet whose shelf could back. After that, Ha Jun pressed the button so he could go downstairs, and the next day, there is someone who took a photo of Sung Chol, Go Lun, and two technicians, and also Du Qi, and resume data of Du Qi is held by the person who took the photo. And then the scene shows a girl run away from the chase of two men in the suit. That girl hid, and the two men failed to find the girl. They would ask her mother reported the missing child. Meanwhile, Du Qi who is at home, is surprised by the arrival of Ha Jun, who apparently is his new neighbor. Ha Jun also doesn't even expect to be in the same rental with Du Kanai. Ha Jun also gave food as a new neighbor. 
and after that permission to come to Dookie's place often. Dookie also thought for a long time and agreed. Hajun then left. After that, Hajun who transported goods to be taken to the new house, curious about the special staff room. So he secretly interjected, but when he entered inside, the elevator did not go down until the bottom. There is a gap that Hajun cannot enter again. Hajun curious about what was downstairs, but then left. Apparently the elevator had been blocked. The next day, Sung Chul asked all luxury taxi staff to enter through one entrance. Sung Chul also doesn't mind Ha Jun's curiosity. After that, Du Qi and two technicians helped clean up Sung Chul's belongings. Sung Chul actually wanted the other staff stay in that place. But Go Yun refuses. Du Qi will also consider it outside. Someone takes a picture of Go Yun. When Go Yun wants to get closer, Ha Jun wants to report. And the person who took the photo leave. Go Yun then help Ha Jun take care of his taxi card, which still doesn't work. Ha Jun wants to ask about the staff room. But Go Yun doesn't respond. After that, Ha Jun going to work, but Go Yun asked for help. Du Qi, who got in the car, immediately followed by Go Yun and Ha Jun. Go Yun asked for help to Ha Jun to find a new house closer to the base. Ha Jun felt Go Yun forcing him, but Ha Jun still wanted to help during Du Qi, who drove. And then they are going visits to various residences. Ha Jun is very helpful and asked many things about the residents. Du Kai even asked. Why Go Yun refused Sung Chul's offer to live on the second floor? Go Yun just doesn't want Sung Chul couldn't rest because he had to keep looking after her. After that, they are going home and Go Yun praised Ha Jun who is quite detailed asking about housing to the owner. Ha Jun admitted, if he moved at a young age and had seen a lot of places, Go Yun actually wanted to return to the her old place, which is under Du Qi's place. But Go Yun gets news from the owner if the place has just been occupied. Ho Jun also makes sure the place that Go Yun means, and Go Yun realizes that her place is inhabited by Ha Jun. Go Yun wants Ha Jun to give it, but Ha Jun refuses. Du Qi also doesn't want to interfere with the conflict. Suddenly, Du Qi breaks suddenly. He panics. A child almost they hit. Du Qi, Go Yun, and Ha Jun approach. But the child ran away in fear. Go Yun and Ha Jun chased her, looking for the child who now is hiding. Du Qi finally managed to find the whereabouts of the child. Du Qi then apologized and wanted to make sure the child's condition is okay. The child named Siu Yian also said that she had to find her younger sister. After that, Siu Yian is taken to headquarters. The thing that Du Qi knows is Siu Yian get lost and doesn't want to go to the police station. Sung Chul appears and welcomes Siu Yian arrival. Sung Chul showing a sticker of a taxi company whose quality is to keep the children safe. Sung Chul makes sure that the place will be safe for Siu Yio. But Siu Yian doesn't know the address and phone number of her parents. After that, the technician tries to comfort Siu Yian. Go Yian then gives Siu Yian a drink, but Siu Yian still silent. Until the sound of bells made her immediately drink. Siu Yian's changed behavior made Go Yian and the two technicians confused. Du Qi also chatted to Sung Chul to discussing Siu Yian who lost her younger sister and was afraid of the police. But Sung Chul had reported the missing child and shortly there is an incoming called. Sung Chul admitted that Siu Yian is with them. To meet Siu Yian, the two technicians and Go Yian are confused by Siu Yian who hides in fear while eating bread. Sung Chul approaches and says that Siu Yian's mother has contacted and is looking for Siu Yian. But Siu Yian said that she had to see her her younger sister first. Her sibling was not with her mother because her mother did not know her younger sister. Siu Yian also asked Sung Sung Chul not to tell someone called uncle. Siu Yian doesn't want to meet her mother. She had to find her younger sister. Sung Chul makes sure that if Siu Yian doesn't need to go, if she doesn't want, Sung Chul promised the place would be safe. Du Qi will check her house first. And when he arrived at the address, Du Qi heard two men who went to Siu Yian's parents' house and asked if they had reported Siu Yian who are missing. Du Kai eavesdropping on the conversation, even the mother was confused whether she would get into trouble if she didn't report. After confirming that the mother had reported the missing of Siu Yian, the two men gave food and then left. Du Qi then pretended from the elevator and called Go Yun, asked for a photo of Siu Yian from the side. After that, Du Qi come to Siu Yian's mother's house and asked about the child who played hide and seek, but he couldn't find. Showed picture of Siu Yian from the side, the two people did not recognize Siu Yian at all. After that, Du Qi are going to follow the two men who had previously came. Call Sung Chul who also confused because Siu Yian's parents did not recognize Siu Yian at all. Du Qi suspicion if Siu Yian was separated by her parents and the suspected people were two men in front of him. Who now comes to the stand and distributes brochures about property consultations for couples who do not have a house, they do not accept unmarried couples. While at the headquarters, police going back home after Sung Chul said that he had made wrong report. The child who was in his place had met her mother and going home.
so that the police will look for Siu Yian again and leave, and then with the other team they discuss what happened to Siu Yian, because the clues from Siu Yian are not very clear, they try to understand further. Siu Yian doesn't know the addresses and mobile phone numbers of her parents, her mother also doesn't know her younger sister, Siu Yian doesn't want to meet her mother, and asks not to be told someone is called uncle. They couldn't contact the police, because the police would only give Siu Yian to parents who didn't even recognize their own child's face, they should be able to get Siu Yian's heart to know more, but soon. Sung Chul immediately got a report if Siu Yian disappeared, Go Yian immediately looked for her, and from CCTV, Siu Yian was not seen coming out of the headquarters, Du Qi also seeing the staff room door opened, come inside, Du Qi felt someone had just entered the room and slipped from the gap. After that, Du Qi are going to the basement and got into his cab. Du Qi found Siu Yian who had been hiding in the car. Siu Yian heard everything that Sung Chul and team were said, Siu Yian then spent money to pay for Du Qi's luxury taxi service. Siu Yian wants Du Qi to find her younger sister, and Du Qi agrees to help. After that, Du Qi gets started with the luxury taxi. He starts the service, Go Yian, and two technicians follow from the undercover car. Their current destination is the address of the stand that Du Qi previously visited. Where in front of the luxurious building, there is a seminar about how to buy a house. The boss named Kang appears and gets an extra service. Everyone is respectful and followed for what being said, Go Yun is checking Kang who has many high-end properties that are very expensive. Go Yun believes Kang is a rich man. Inside he holds property seminars that are widely attended, but to be able to consult face-to-face, -face, not just anyone can be elected. When Kang is coming, many people welcome him in front of public. Kang behaves very friendly and kind, but behind, Kang is very disgusted and even asks his subordinates to work better. When someone wants to see him, the seminar begins. Only people with special tickets can enter, after that, Duki gathers into an undercover team selling fruit juice. So far, the information that the person who reported Siu Yin missing is a newly who adopted Siu Yin, and unclear, the relationship of adoption with the property consulting business. Duki then showed a consultation brochure that had a photo of Siu Yin with Kang. Sung Chul joining and asked the team to be careful in that case, because there were children at stake, and because it is not just anyone able to consult with Kang. Duki so asked to go in to get married. At the taxi headquarters, Ha Jun buys Siu Yin new clothes. Sung Chul comes and thanks because Ha Jun for taking care of her. After that, Ha Jun continues to work, and Sung Chul invites Siu Yin to play together. Siu Yin still doesn't really believe to Sung Chul, while Go Lan now has changed her appearance. With Du Kai, they become a newly married couple. They come to Kang stand to consultation to buy a house. Du Qi and Go Yin seem very affectionate, and personal questions about age of marriage, job, and finances are raised. But Du Qi and Go Lun have not planned too far. So many answers are not cohesive. They also look for excuses so as not to be suspected. After that, Du Qi and Go Lun get a special offer to come to Kang's seminar. They are very happy. After that, they came to the seminar and told to fill out the form honestly so that they could be assessed. Whether they could have face-to-face -face consultation with Kang or not. Soon, Kang show up and give his seminar about buying a house for a newly married couple. Kang begins his narrative by buying a house is difficult for people with small incomes, moreover the property prices always increase every year. Borrowing from the bank is actually a lot of conditions that must be met, but Kang has a solution without having to struggle. The solution will only be told to lucky people who can consult with him personally. The seminar ends. The Du Qi form and Go Yun is also taken. Later it will be their turn to meet with Kang to assessment. On the other side, Sung Chul took Siu Yian to playground. Siu Yian originally gloomy, so she could have fun there, and even began to believe in Sung Chul, and returned to the office, it was Du Qi and Go Yun's turn to arrive, they meet Kang is checking the form, but from what Kang see, Du Qi and Go Yun who just married already have $300,000, making him confused, even though Du Qi's job is only a taxi driver, Go Yun admitted to helping Du Qi, and has side job as a singer, but as a result, Du Qi and Go Yun are not suitable to join Kang's program, because with that much money, Du Qi and Go Yun should be able to buy their own house. Du Qi and Go Yun disappointedly and confused and then leave. They are failed, and Du Qi also has a plan. At night, Go Yun switch off the building's electrician, and two technicians disguised as electricians, in the middle of security guards' carelessness. Du Qi enter the building secretly and head to Kang's room. Du Qi hack the computer and asks Go Yun to check further. Du Qi seeing the form that had been checked by Kang, where the person received by Kang apparently must have assets in under $100,000. Kang is looking for couples who did not have much money or aren't eligible to apply for homeownership. After confirming that the forms haven't been uploaded to the server, Du Qi had a plan. 
he lit a match right at the fire detector, water rained heavily down on the room. The next day, the office is chaotic, the subordinates panicked because all the forms were also checked are damaged, and because it has not been copied or uploaded to the server. Kang is very angry, they will do the task twice. The next day, Du Qi and Go Lun consult again with Kang. Kang confused with Du Qi and Go Lun, which suddenly their assets are drastically reduced. Du Qi also admitted if he joined into crypto and lost a lot of money, and after assessing the form of Du Qi, Kang also said that if Du Qi and Go Lun are very difficult to get house, Kang can only help people who fit his criteria, one of which is people who are very desperate. Du Qi and Go Lun also say that if they are very desperate, and to prove it, Kang asks Du Qi and Go Lun to do something. Du Qi and Go Lun agree, they will do anything as long as they can have a house. After that, Du Qi and Go Lun go home, they are still confused, why Kang as if intimidating them? Until Kang calls, which turns out to be currently heading to the address written by Du Qi and Go Lun, Du Qi believes, Kang is testing them. Go Lun write the address of Sung Chul's house, and they are being panicked. Two technicians are told to decorate the house so that looks like a new lead residence, Kang and his team, the arrives in Sung Chul's place, wants to check further. Du Qi and Go Lian just arrived. Du Qi apologizes for not being able to hurry up. Kang sees Du Qi and Go Lian's house is quite good. But Du Qi and Go Lian admit that if they only rent, Kang allowed to enter. Seo Yian, who wants to return to the base, sees Kang's car and leaves immediately. Her escape was seen by one of his men. He's sure that what he had just seen was Seo Yian. So he come to the place of taxi headquarters. Seo Yian still hiding, almost caught. Sung Chul come and asked what the person was doing in that place. The man claimed to be looking for a child, but Sung Chul showed the youngest staff there. The subordinates felt wrong seeing and permission to go. Sung Chul then approached Siu Yian who was apparently not afraid, because in that place, Siu Yian sure that it was a safe place. Two technicians had also decorated Sung Chul's house to look like newlyweds, Sung Chul actually not sure. Du Qi and Go Lun, also quite confused by the design of the house, made in such a way by two technicians. Du Qi and Go Lun said are claimed in romantic period, Du Qi and Go Lian trying to explain many things that are odd. And when in the room, Kang confused why the bed is just one. Many reasons that Du Qi and Go Lian used when back outside, Kang also says if he knows Du Qi and Go Lian are not married yet. Du Qi and Go Lian are silent. Kang knows if Du Qi and Go Lian doesn't seem to be married. Du Qi so asks if it would be easier to buy a house if not married. Kang doesn't respond. Du Qi and Go Lian pretending to be sad and prepare if they have to divorce, if it can make them get a house, Kang laughs and then decides to leave. Du Qi and Go Lian are confused and because they are already found out actually not a married couple. Du Qi has a plan. He approaches Kang again and begs Du Qi to know if Kang really like people who are so desperate. And Du Qi now admits that if he is not married to Go Lian and only work friends, the reason for tricking Kang for wanting to get a house. But Du Qi makes sure if he is willing to do anything, as long as Kang continues to help them, Kang shake Du Qi's hand, and will help so that Du Qi can get house. After that, they come to the apartment sales place to check the house that Du Qi and Go Lian will occupy later. Du Qi and Go Lian are very happy and didn't expect Kang to be willing to help them get a house, because their finances are insufficient on the condition that Go Lian must be healthy because they will have a child. Du Qi and Go Lian are confused because Go Lian is not pregnant at all, but Kang doesn't explain further and goes. Du Qi and Go Lian still doesn't understand. At the same time, Sum Chul now read children's stories to Siu Yian. Siu Yian also seems more cheerful and happy to be there. After that, Siu Yian wants to draw and Sum Chul invites her. At night, they have a meeting together to discuss developments each of them. Sung Chul and Go Yun can't find Siu Yian's adoption documents. They believe that if the adoption process is done illegally, Sung Chul also show the picture made by Siu Yian, and after being observed, the angle of the picture when Siu Yian was in a place like behind bars. Well, before this, Siu Yian was a child who lived near the park. They saw other children play happily, while Siu Yian and her confined friends can't be happy at all. They live in a shabby and very messy place. Siu Yian is also quite close to another daughter whom Siu Yian calls sister. Even though the younger sister is not Siu Yian's biological sister, but Siu Yian is very considerate. When the younger sister misses her mother, Siu Yian invites play together. They play in the park, but the game is only part of their imagination. They can't get out of the place. After that, the adults come in. There is Kang there, and then gathers the children and gives them food. They are not allowed to eat until Kang rings the bell. Kang treats the children like animals. Kang looks happy. To the present, Du Qi gets a call from Kang who says that Du Qi is going to be father. Kang asks Du Qi to bring Go Yun, was confused, 
but Du Qi will obey him. After that, Du Qi and Go Lian come to a special women's hospital for pregnant. Kang's subordinate immediately welcomes, directs Du Qi and Go Lian to meet Kang who is waiting. Kang immediately asks Go Lian and Du Kai looks for the child's name. Du Qi thought that if he would get an adopted child, but according to Kang, an adopted child could not get many points to meet the requirements for repaying the house. Du Qi and Go Lian still doesn't understand. At the same time, a woman who is about to give birth comes. Kang then asks Du Qi and Go Lian to sign the birth certificate. The baby who will be born in that place must be registered as Du Qi's child, so that Du Qi and Go Lian can pass the eligibility test for house loan. Du Qi and Go Lian will not raise the child, because when the time is right, Kang will take the child back. Then Du Qi and Go Lian can report the child missing. Shortly, Kang is going to take care of the person who will give birth. Kang seeing at the annoyed on the face of Go Lian who can't be hidden. Du Qi said if Go Lian must have thought of a name. After that, Kang left. Du Qi and Go Lian also knows how Seo Yin and the other children are trapped with Kang. While Kang beats up the woman who wants to give birth, the woman has no money to give birth, and Kang makes a deal. Kang only wants that baby and all expenses will be paid by Kang. But the woman doesn't want to, even though she was pregnant out of wedlock and had no one, but she still wanted to raise her child. Du Qi observed from afar. The woman was forced to give up the baby. Even begging it means nothing. Du Qi had a plan. Fire alarm turns on. Kang and the subordinate immediately check on. Du Qi and Go Lian then meet Kang, who says that childbirth process takes time, and asks Du Qi to come tomorrow. But the subordinate come to tell if the woman runs away. The subordinate's told to chase her. The woman who tried to escape was caught by Kang's subordinate. Kang's subordinate who approached in her car doesn't not make the woman stop until the woman fell. She could not run anymore. But the taxi car come and block subordinate's car. The woman has chance to escape. The subordinate is confused but still wanted to continue chasing the woman. Du Kai in the taxi car continued to act. He circled the subordinate's car with drifting, making the subordinate unable to continue his speed and scared. After that, Du Qi beat the subordinate, the woman who ran away, exhausted. She tried to hold back her tears and Go Lan will come to calm her down. And then Du Qi and Go Lan drive the woman to the hospital, acquaintance of Sung Chul. She will give birth at that place, so all they know is, Kang took a child from an only woman and had another couple register their births, so it would be impossible to find other children through adoption agency. Du Qi who remember if Kang have a lot of properties, ask Go Lan to check all the properties and sort them from the lowest price to the highest price. All the properties are in big cities, and the lowest property price is the photo studio, because Kang is the property businessman. So they suspect that there is something in the photo studio. Du Qi then comes to the photo studio in question and breaks the door to enter in further checking. There are many photos of a pair of people with a child, although the studio was declared closed, but Du Qi believes the activity is still operating. Until Du Qi sees a photo of Si Yuan with different parents, now Du Qi understands why Si Yuan's parents used to not recognize Si Yuan. Siu Yin used to be promised to have parents, a married couple come to take pictures with their adopted children. They will get more points so that the application for a house loan will be accepted faster. Siu Yin was happy because she thought that she will be free from the place of adoption and will live with her parents, but in fact was not. Siu Yin will only be the child in the photo. Siu Yin will not have parents, and if Siu Yin not obey, she will get punishment. Siu Yin was forced to take pictures. She has four pairs of adoptive parents, and after taking pictures, Siu Yin back at the adoption place again. Du Qi and Go Lian certainly very upset. Siu Yin who sleeps is also now dreaming that if her sister will be promised get parents, Siu Yin certainly asks to exchange with her sister. She doesn't want her sister to feel false hope like her, but it was useless. Siu Yin could only cry and Sung Chul who seeing the crying then woke Siu Yin up. Sung Chul thinks that Siu Yin had bad dream and tried to calm down, but then realized something. The next day, another child is going to have a photo session, and then Du Qi appeared and talked to the child. Kang's men confused and thought if Du Qi was wrong shooting schedule, Du Qi then apologized on behalf of the adults. The store door was closed. Du Qi asked the child to close her eyes and ears, while counting from 1 to 10. Outside, the two technicians tried to close the door, and after the child obeyed him, Du Qi began to act. He beat up Kang's men there. Two versus one is win by Du Qi easily. Du Qi wanted to know the whereabouts of the other children, and the child who closed her eyes, and then taken away by Du Qi. After hand over that child to Sung Chul, Du Qi continued to leave. Du Qi and Go Lian just didn't understand why Kang had the heart to take a child from a single woman, and then offer them to a couple who wanted to have a house. 30 unit apartments belong to Kang, must be because of this cunning way. 
Meanwhile, in Kang's place, he got a new house ownership certificate. There are already many certificates that Kang has been getting. He is very happy. But soon other people wanted to enter, a married couple who had previously asked Kang for help to buy a house, upset because Kang took their house certificate. Once this couple wanted their house, and they obey orders by Kang, by registering a child they didn't recognize on a birth certificate. So the government and banks will find it easier to approve home ownership loans, but Kang feels that their relationship is mutually beneficial. The couple has got the house. Obviously the couple doesn't accept it, because they paid the house. But instead Kang took the house certificate, the couple intended to go to the police, but Kang is not afraid at all, because what the couple did would only get them involved in a crime, because they adopted the child illegally, they could go to jail and have to continue to pay their house debts, they could not report to the police, Kang would win over the situation and then drive the couple away. Shortly he got a video if there was a commotion in the photo studio, Kang rushed away, and at night, Du Qi managed to track down Kang's place. He came to the place and heard children's voices. But when they entered it, the children apparently played outside, and the place was locked from the outside. Kang dowsing in gasoline, and intended to burn the place. Seeing Du Kit there, Kang sure if Du Ki is the father of one of the children, Kang doesn't feel guilty at all for his actions and start burning the place. Kang leave, his men now put the children in the suitcases and two technicians, and Go An who just arrived was confused intending to save Du Ki who was trapped in the fire. Du Kai instead asked for friends only to follow Kang. They obey for what Du Ki ordered. Du Kai still had difficulty escaping until he heard the sound of a child crying on the second floor. In a cupboard, there is a boy crying in fear. Du Qi then calmed him down and is going to save the child. Because the fire is getting bigger, Du Qi jumped from the window, and luckily, the child is still safe and fine. Du Qi continued to leave, and the fire was getting fiercer. Go Yun, who heard the sound from Du Qi, so no more worry. Du Qi will catch up. Kang also planned to move, and because the child in the suitcase is crying, Kang and Oibel beats up the suitcase. Sung Chol calls Du Qi and tells him if there is a lump on Siu Yin's head, which according to the doctor, Siu Yin was hit constantly. Du Qi is getting annoyed. He remember the money gave by Siu Yin to use the luxury taxi service. Kang come to their building, two technicians, and Go Lian then continue with running. They are seeing Kang leave, but not with the children. So they also search for the whereabouts of the children first. Now Kang wants to take all the assets he have. It's just that their men are screaming in pain. Kang panicked, and when checked, Du Qi was present to defeat his men. Kang wanted to fight back, but Du Qi was more brushy. Du Qi wanted to know the whereabouts of the children and tortured Kang. The two technicians, and Go Lan, also still looking but found nothing. Kang then said if Du Qi killed him, then the children would die. Du Qi let his stranglehold and Kang beat Du Qi back. Kang is happy because Du Qi can't fight him, or the children will die. Kang makes an offer if he will kill Du Qi, then the children will be free. But if Du Kai still wants to live, then the children who will die, Go Men also end up hearing a voice for help in a car. She asks for help from the two technicians to break into the car and find the children, and after getting information if the children are found. Du Qi also avoids Kang's attack. Du Qi continues to attack Kang brutally, and Kang has no chance to fight back. Kang is taken to a dump, and it is difficult to escape. Now the place will be home for Kang, because another house of Kang has been taken over by two technicians. Du Qi wants Kang to tell the truth if he wants to be saved. Has Kang ever thought of pitying the children and promising them parents? And Kang saying that the children with him were abandoned children. So he used the children, he also admitted to feeding and bed. Because each child made couples who wanted to have a house get an extra points so that installments could be approved. Du Kai even hates Kang more. And because Kang doesn't care at all about the pain the children feel, feeling Kang will be released for answering honestly. But Du Qi breaks the promise. Du Qi will let Kang forever there because he also breaks a promise to the children who hope to get parents. After that, Du Qi hoards Kang in a pile garbage. Now their task is complete. Du Qi and Go Lun will also have to divorce because their disguise as a married couple is over. And when at the headquarters, Ha Jun greets Du Qi who just finished with his shift. Ha Jun claims to start a new shift and then drive. But when there is customer who want to use a taxi, Ha Jun ignores him. Ha Jun instead goes somewhere, he was very welcomed by others, and even had the person there who found the passengers, Ha Jun come into the place and change his appearance. Ha Jun had luxury goods, and then looked back at the photos pasted there, there are photos of Du Qi, and his luxury taxi service. Meanwhile at other times, news broke about the criminal arrest of the illegal organization that helped people adopted children, and after that there is also news of a very large donation by an anonymous person to the orphanage. Go Eun knows if Sung Chol who donated such a large amount of money. And now Sung Chol brought toys to come to Si Yun's place, and her sister who had got adoptive parents. Si Yun seemed very happy and Sung Chol also happy.
On the other side, the married couple annoyed because they would lose their house because they had used Kang's services. In the midst of a commotion, Du Qi came and explained if So Yin had a wound that could not be healed. Du Qi wanted to know which whelm the couple gave to Si Yun. And elsewhere, Kang now is very poor. There is no one else on his side. And then there is someone who comes closer. Kang is very scared and says that if he has not committed any crime, Kang blames the taxi driver who took all his property. The person in front of Kang is apparently Ha Jun and wants to know more about what the taxi driver has done. Ha Jun apparently not just anyone. He told his men to be the taxi driver while he is wearing more luxurious clothes and then met with a man. They discussed business contract. Ha Jun even immediately paid a very large down payment. But this man felt strange, but he didn't respond anymore. And after signing the contract, the man felt pain and never left. Ha Jun showed his original side. He upset because he should have contracted their business. He got the biggest profit, but the whole business failed because of the interference of other parties. The man only realized that if there is poison in the tea he drank, he was not saved anymore, and Ha Jun would take over their business. Ha Jun then opened the curtain. Many photos were pasted on the wall about Sung Chol and his team, who have always been in touch and investigate all this time. The chaos that has recently occurred, there is interference Blue Bird Taxi Company. Du Kani and Sung Chol are also now discussing about the body of Kang found on the mountain. The police suspect him to be a suicide. Du Ki and Sung Chol is getting confused, first about the death of the police captain who was shot, now Kang stated suicide. Du Ki suspects someone brought Kang to the mountain, because Kang was supposed to be a homeless at the subway station. Du Ki believes someone knows about luxury taxi services. Even watching from a very close distance, at the same time, Go Lian is told to ride in a luxury taxi and introduced to seat belts the latest innovation from two technicians, and because she can't get off, Go Yun is very annoyed by two techniques that don't want to deal with Go Lun, and so Go scared. Outside, Tu Ki and Sung Chol sees Ha Jun who returns home early. Ha Jun says that he has met his daily target and will leave again. Meanwhile, Go Lun now wants to beat up two technicians who dodge in the car. Ha Jun then take his taxi and leave. In different places, a woman named Jin He is not allowed to enter the church. The church officials there forbid anyone from entering other than the congregation. Jin He just wants to be reunited with her sister. And soon the church leader appears. He is highly respected. And Jin He says that her sister is the only family she has. But the church leader says that Jin He considers that her sister is family. Jin He shouldn't have despised her sister's religion. After that, the police appeared and instead of helping Jin He, so instead they brought Jin He because they got a report that Jin He entered someone else's private property. Jin He is still rebelling. She doesn't want to leave there before her sister appeared. And from under the police car, there is luxury taxi service sticker. So after that, Jin He calls a taxi and Du Ki comes to pick her up. Jin He explains what happened, starting with Jin He who was accepted at the university. Her sister and Jin He are very happy. Her sister asked Jin He to study hard make many friends and don't have to worry about the cost. Besides an older sister, Jin He's sister is also a mother and father for Jin He. But after graduation, her sister began to get sickly to see the doctor. Her sister was diagnosed with acute leukemia. They realized the presence of the disease too late. But two years passed when Jin He half day work permit to visit her sister. Her sister said if she didn't intend to continue treatment because it would only waste money. Jin He obviously refused and asked her sister not to worry about money. Jin He tried to calm her sister and then took the doctor's prescription. Absolutely her sister must have been very sad and soon a woman calmed her down. Since then her sister began to behave strangely and often watched worship videos from church. That church promising healing and testimonials from other congregations that made her sister's faith waver. But her sister doesn't want to say anything to Jin He. She keeps a lot of secrets until Jin He sees a loan bill that her sister immediately grabs. Her sister face of the battered, her sister also tries to cover up, until finally her sister leaves her cell phone and Jin He checks that all this time, her sister saw a heretical sect that promises health and vilifies the hospital. Jin He is getting sadder, and her sister even gets upset, because Jin He checks her phone without permission. Jin He thinks that her sister is crazy, but her sister insists that if only the church can take care of her, not hospital. Jin He annoyed because her sister make a debt to pay to the church, which is not clear. But her sister can't be talked about, she instead prays fervently, her common sense is gone. Jin He comes to the doctor who suggests that her sister continue the treatment or her condition worsens. And when Jin He wants to talk to her, her sister has left a letter in telling. If her condition gets worse and cannot improve, her sister has resigned to meeting the god she worships. 
she sees a bright light and is sure that it is heaven. Jin He will understand if she joined the congregation too. Jin He then tries to go to the church, but her sister ignores her. Jin He is forbidden to enter if not the congregation. There is an officer who said that if her sister doesn't want to meet and asks Jin He to leave immediately. Jin He obviously doesn't believe him. Jin He then reported to the police, but the police cannot interfere in any religious affairs, even from the letter left by her sister. There is no indication that if her sister was kidnapped, the police could not do anything. The next day, Du Qi with a taxi car, observing the people in front of the church protesting to want their family members back, has long since the sect leader came and didn't care at all about the crowds that happened. Du Qi then seeing the other side of the church that is also being closely monitored. Go Gyun is also still trying to rotate the church's security system. She asks two technicians to install the tools on the electricity pole. And after the device is installed, Go Un can see what is happening inside the church. Du Qi is watching from his car. The leader of sect explains that if the hospital puts evil spirits in every medicine, he believes the hospital will only give the disease. Two people in front of him who are related as mother and child must sever their relationship because that way they can go to heaven. Two people who don't want evil spirits in them and then beaten by the sect leader. After that, the leader of sect told those two people to break family ties and hit each other to cast out demons. Those two people also hit each other. The leader of sect continued to sermon very passionately. The congregation joined the fanatics and then approached, as if thinking the sect leader was their savior. Sung Chul and the team who were watching could not think of it, and from the information Go Lun got, the sect leader had many records of fraud cases, and in this time is planning the construction very magnificent chapel. Sung Chul is also a bit pessimistic, being able to awaken the congregation who follow the sect, because their beliefs are already very strong. Du Kei also has a plan to stop that wrong sect, and ask one of the technicians to hit him. The technician obviously doesn't want. He knows if he will become a victim again, but Du Kai still forcing. In other place, Ha Jun showed photos of Du Kei and Sung Chol to his colleague who served as an executive from the community. The man is also a senior police. Ha Jun explained that if he had investigated Sung Chol and teams at the taxi place, and from Ha Jun's observation, all the property owned had been liquidated and then the money was donated. The senior police blamed Ha Jun for wasting time so Sung Chol and others mess up their business. But Ha Jun says a lot of what he did. Their business is manipulated so that the people who are really involved undetected. Ha Jun's plan is perfect, especially about the operation in Vietnam by hiring a police captain just in case. But strangely, Sung Chol and the team still uncover the crime. Ha Jun doesn't like Du Ki who has suddenly infiltrated his business. And not only the business in Vietnam, another business represented by Kang is also destroyed by Du Ki. Ha Jun confused why Sung Chol and his group provide taxi services that are quite strange. Ha Jun is very curious and asks to the camera who now is recording them. Ha Jun sure if Sung Chol and his team are involved in their business. Jin He also now sets DVDs and chooses revenge for the case that happened to her sister. After that, Du Ki acted with his luxury taxi. Go Yun and the two technicians also followed in disguise car. One of the technicians looked uneasy. He then sat alone in the hospital. Another friend observing from afar. The technician would be the bait. He is very fear and sadness, and crying made others approach and talk to him. The technician was given a leaflet and confessed, has a disease that cannot be cured. The heretical congregation also said that she also used to have a disease and now fully cured. After that, the technician is taken to the church. Many congregations are solemn listening to the story The Recovery of the Woman. The leader of the sect also took over. He then gets closer to Jin He's sister who is getting worse. The sect leader promises to provide powerful energy that can cure diseases in other congregation. He then shows the attraction. He turns the colored water back into clear. The people are less denying and amazed. Their belief is getting stronger if the sect leader is not just anyone. And the person who approaches instead beaten by the sect leader as an exorcism of evil spirits. The technician then approaches Jin He's sister who seems increasingly unhealthy. She claimed to be better and currently is trying to fight the evil spirit in her body. The technician tries to tell if her illness cannot be cured in that place. But Jin He's sister still insists on the place she will be healed. While Du Ki is also now preparing for his disguise, the technician disguised as congregation also claimed that he could not take Jin He's sister out. The congregation has been instilled with beliefs that are difficult to shake. Du Ki also plans to create a sect leader who expels his own congregation. But the success of the plan depends of the two technicians. After that, Du Ki gave a draft of the plan. The technician also agreed, and one of the technicians returned to the church. The leader of the sect would give water to the congregation who wanted to go to heaven and give present. The congregation also gave treasures and then got a drink.
The technician who see Jin He's sister so participated in the lineup too. When all the people of the treasures allot, the technician gave a little treasure. After being given a drink, he returned to the chair and spit out the drink that was instead approached by the men of cult leader. The technician was taken to another room with a photo of the sect leader. He was forced to memorize the doctrine of the sect to practice the belief. The technician could only come out after successfully memorizing the doctrine. The next diary, the technician can only return with a look that is not as searchable. The doctrine in his memory is attached, and the friend who is afraid so will take the technician to another faith room. At different times, the sect leader is in the restaurant and buys expensive jewelry to his woman who is also part of the their sect officials, they are very happy and the sect leader doesn't care about his followers at all, whether it would be dying or even dead, legally, the sect leader would not be guilty. He is also good at acting and confident that he can get away with various problems. Apparently the conversation was secretly recorded by Go Yun, and then the servant come and gave the bill from another chair for the leader of the sect who paid for it. The sect leader is obviously upset, and seeing the table who gave him the bill was Du Kai in disguise like the shaman and the technician as his servant. The sect leader approached and little bit annoyed with Du Kai's food bill, but he had to pay. But Du Kai said that the price is cheap enough for sect leader's life. Du Qi asked the sect leader more guarding his head, because according to Du Qi, the sect leader will die young. The sect leader doesn't being angry, and with confused returns to his desk and doesn't want to respond to Du Qi anymore, he believes Du Qi and the technician are crazy. When back home, the sect leader is almost the fall of the shop board. He remembers what Du Qi said to guard the head and destined to die young. While Go Yun gets an information if fluids are given from the sect leader to his congregation contains chemicals that are usually used as hard drugs for cancer, will danger if its use is not correct. On the other side, at the magnificent chapel construction, the sect leader come upset. The construction had to stop because the worker to find relics from ancient times, they should contact the government. The sect leader obviously doesn't want the land belong to the government property and immediately destroyed the relics that appeared. Until there is relics released black smoke, making him a little bit confused but immediately ignored it. Now the construction can continue and crossing the workers don't make any reports if they find other historical relics again. The sect leader doesn't want his expensive chapel was constrained and leave. The leaving of the leader of sect alone with his car. It was observed by Du Qi, who immediately coordinated with other friends, while Go Yun at the headquarters wanted to feed the technician who was working on Du Qi orders. But because she was surprised by other technicians hiding in the glass cabinet, Go Yun being annoyed, and doesn't feeding the technician. The sect leader also threw the quiet way, and had seen someone dressed in black. Initially he confused if in a quiet place, there is villager, until another strangeness occurred, the car could no longer be operated, the engine turned off, and when go out, the cell phone signal also not detected, little bit annoyed, he is seeing someone there. The sect leader approached to the place which was decorated like in a ritual place, until Du Qi played with his bells. The sect leader so wanted to borrow a cell phone of Du Qi, and when Du Qi turned his head, the sect leader is even more annoyed, because Du Qi absolutely no manners since they met. Du Qi is so annoyed too. He told the figure in front of him to gone. The wind blows and fire on the candle off, and the stone shakes. The sect leader is getting more confused, and Du Qi continuing if the evil creature following the sect leader has run away for now, but it will soon return for the life for the sect leader. From behind the scenes, Go Yun now reactivating the electronic device. The sect leader's cell phone signal now is back to work, and the sect leader is even laughs at Du Qi. He doesn't believe Du Qi's talk and leaves. Go Dian laughs and quite satisfied with the expression of the sect leader, and Du Qi sure that the sect leader will definitely believe him. The sect leader back to the church and is served like a king. His congregation then reported if any of their congregation died on the way to the hospital. The sect leader is very happy. He then come to the police station with crying and explained about the death of his congregation. The family of the congregation who passed away clearly said that if the sect leader killed their family. The officer tried to prevent their hysterical. And the sect leader said that in the past, he often told the deceased to go home. But the deceased still chose the sect leader, even the deceased had told that his family was mean to him. And from the insurance record, the insurance recipient for the death of the person is the church. Which made the sect leader even more moved, because the deceased trusted him more than his family. The family getting more upset, and the police calmed the family down. After that, the sect leader going home with his car, treated very well by the congregation, Go Yun and two technicians are really annoyed. The sect leader obviously no longer deserves to be called a human, but Go Yun believes the Du Qi's plan will be a success. Sung Chol then contacts who according to him, the congregation who joined the heretical sect must also be shaken by their trust. So that they no longer trust the sect leader, the two technicians become calmer. They had also installed a device in sect leader's car. Sung Chol now is ready with his costume. 
and at night when the sect leader is on the way, he almost hit a figure dressed in black who suddenly disappeared. Astonishing if only the imaginary, the sect leader continued the trip, and the seatbelt suddenly tied him tightly. The steering wheel of the car is also out of control, he almost had an accident, until finally the car stopped by itself. The sect leader who is very scared, he is out of the car, and even more confused and annoyance, he doesn't know what happened. After that, he contacted the repair shop that took care of his car and connected to Godion, who claimed that the sect leader's car is fine. The sect leader felt cheated by the workshop, and after the phone call hung up, suddenly he felt that something strange. There is figure approaching him, making him startled, but the figure disappeared, and the fear of the sect leader made his girlfriend confused. The sect leader sure that someone was there, and his girlfriend made sure that if there was no one in the place, his girlfriend suggested that the sect leader see a doctor, and he is obey her. The next day he does a doctor's examination, but the doctor didn't see any strange symptoms on sect leader's body. Go Mian also doesn't think of the sect leader who forbade his congregation to go to the doctor, instead himself going to doctor, and did all the tests to check his health. The sect leader did not even believe in God and took the most expensive class to be served more maximal. After finished treatment and wants to go home, the sect leader said Du Kibu said, if there is something bad that wants to take his life, believes it or not, the sect leader finally goes to Du Ki's place. The technician who is the servant immediately approaches and says, if the sect leader wants to meet Duki, then he must make an appointment first. The fastest empty schedule is in 2026. The sect leader obviously doesn't want to wait that long. Duki then appears and questions the commotion that occurs, and after the technician explains, Duki is being upset because the sect leader entered his private property. If the sect leader doesn't want to go, Duki will contact the police. The technician then drives the sect leader away, who making him annoyed and contacting his men. At the same time, Jin He was beaten up by the collector because her sister had a lot of debt and asked Jin He to pay it off. And then Go Dun showed up and calmed Go Yun knowing about the laws of foreigners entering private property. Jin He could kick them out and if they refused, Go Dun would help. The debt collector still would not want to leave and Go Dun immediately attacked. She used her police weapon first and explained that the fight is a form of self-defense because the debt collector did not obey to go. Thinking if Go Gyun is a police, they were scared and leave. After that, Go Gyun helped Jin Hee clean up the mess of the house. Gan Yun also calmed Jin Hee down and made sure that her sister would definitely return. Back to the sect leader, now he is holding Du Kai captive and took him to his place. His congregation had asked why the sect leader brought a shaman, but the sect leader doesn't explain and told everyone to leave. Leaving the sect leader and Du Ki who was upset because of being treated badly. The sect leader confused. Why since meeting Du Ki, bad things happened to him? Du Ki also brought up the evil creatures in his body, the sect leader disturbing something that shouldn't be. The sect leader is even more annoyed, and thinks that if all of these are trap of Du Ki, he threatens will kill Du Ki. And then the sect leader prepares to take the golf club, and wants to beat Du Kai. But the lights suddenly go out. Du Ki who speaks settles the glass, making the sect leader confused who has been noticed, there is the same ghost figure as he saw before. The sect leader was scared and released Du Ki to help him, and then Du Ki put the talisman, the ghost gone and the lights came back on. The sect leader even more frightened, he is confused about what happened, and Du Ki wanted to know what the sect leader was doing until a very evil creature disturbed him. The sect leader also remembered about the relic he destroyed, he then took Du Ki to the his chapel building. Du Qi then found a drawing of an ancient hero, who Du Qi believed that the person would disturb the person who destroyed his relics until that person died. The sect leader then asked for amulets, and Du Qi asked the sect leader no longer meet him, because since they met, Du Qi is always unlucky. Du Qi also forbids the sect leader to increase wealth for seven days and seven nights. The sect leader with annoyed then leave. Go Eun then comes and asks for a talisman also by Du Ki, while the sect leader actually doubts about Du Kai, but instead of continuing to be haunted, he also attached the talisman according to Du Ki's orders. Soon, his trusted congregation appeared and told that if the sect leader had an exorcism schedule, and then the sect leader in front of other congregations beating up the congregation who wanted the demons in her body to be expelled, including Jin He's sister, the technician who couldn't bear to obviously want to replace the position. After from the church, his technician friend offered the food, the technician disguised as the congregation is crying, because only this time receiving a very severe blow in his life, the technician offered to be beaten because he couldn't bear to see Jin He's sister, and from this technician information, Information, Go Yun and Du Ki knows if the sect leader still asked for money blatantly. Under the pretext of build the chapel, they will also carry out the plan B. Du Ki will call the sect leader's mother who died a long time ago. On another day, when the sect leader wanted to show his strength, there is stains on the paintings and the sect leader's clothes. 
the people are confused as to what happened, and the sect leader panicked. He asked all the congregation to get out of that place. The technician now come out and happy to see the fear of the sect leader. After that, Dukey was brought in and checked the church. The sect leader wanted Dukey saved him, but Dukey felt that the death of the sect leader is much better. Dukey couldn't help and returned the money that the sect leader once gave. Dukey asked the sect leader to stay away. The sect leader obviously doesn't want to die quickly. He chased Dukey all the way to the temple and begged Dukey to drive away the bad things from his life. Duque is still reluctant, but when he wanted to leave, the door was directly closed and things are getting out of control, there is a figure that the sect leader take to that place. Duque asks the sect leader to hide if he doesn't want to die. While Duque now acts as if he is fighting an invisible evil, Duque seems to be possessed, and the sect leader is getting more curious and more uneasy. Duque moves by himself and suddenly calls the sect leader as his son. Duque, as if he is possessed by the sect's leader mother. Go Hyun succeeds found out quite a lot about the sect leader's mother. The sect leader, even more convinced that his mother's spirit was in Du Ki's body, because he knew many things about himself. Du Ki with his act managed to make the sect leader cry and Go Hyun respect to that acting. After waking up and calming down, Du Ki asked the sect leader to no longer come back to see him. The sect leader still confused by the paper Du Ki wrote when he was in the sect leader's mother possession. There are six lines of numbers, which the first and second lines were the dates of birth and death of the father, in the third and fourth lines were the dates of birth and death of the mother, while the fifth line was the date of birth of the sect leader, the number in the sixth line made the sect leader sure if it was the date of his death. The sect leader doesn't have much time left, but he asks Duki for help, he doesn't want to die, and is very begging. Until the technician mentions about exorcism against death, which makes the sect leader ask Duki to do the ritual. Duki refuses because the ritual can risk his life. It's just wind, lights, and bells moving itself. Duki also seemed to be given a sign from the sect leader's mother, who wanted Duki to save his son. The sect leader would do whatever Duki asked, and Duki finally agreed. The next day, Duki and the team decorated the ritual place. Duki asked the sect leader not to pray or chase money for a while. Duki also gave amulets that must be worn at all times. All the sect leader's property must also be given to Duki. The sect leader obey him. He is forbidding his congregation to give offering money and forbidding prayer. The congregation is confused. After that the sect leader takes all the property he has, the necklace given by Du Ki, is connected to a camera that Go Eun could observe, including taking returning the luxurious treasure he gave to his girlfriend. Du Ki managed to shake the sect leader's trust, and then Du Ki doing a fake ritual of the sect leader who now his pride is gone. Sung Chol, Go Eun, and the technician helped the ritual process. The sect leader's girlfriend also confused by the loan bill that suddenly appeared in her mailbox. The treasure in the church is also all gone. The sect leader's girlfriend is very angry. Jin He's sister is also still praying and hoping for the recovery. One technician just watching with pity until her sister collapses, and the technician immediately helps her. Du Ki now is pranking the sect leader who is willing to be fed as long as he can stay alive. Du Ki avenged the behavior of the sect leader who had been acting arbitrarily to the congregation. Du Ki hit the sect leader brutally. His girlfriend then appeared and Du Ki overthrew the sect leader. After that, the sect leader is hospitalized and increasingly believed in Du Ki. He kept saying Du Ki's name. While his girlfriend took over the church and wanted the treasures of the congregation, she claimed to have received a revelation, so that now she is promised heaven to the congregation. Shortly, the sect leader came upset because the congregation kept gathering and made him unlucky. His girlfriend doesn't stay silent. She is angry because the sect leader believed in the shaman. The sect leader certainly doesn't accept Du Ki being humbled. He praised Du Ki as his savior, which made his girlfriend think the sect leader is crazy. They also fight, the other congregations are confused, and the technician displays recording of the sect leader so far. If there is no congregation, starting from the sect leader who is in the hospital, claiming not to believe in God, not caring about his congregation who died and made him rich until he came to the shaman, now the trust of the congregation is broken. They really did not expect that Duki's plan to make the congregation not believe in the sect leader is successful. They are being annoyed with the sect leader who had been lying. They immediately attacked the sect leader. The excessive fanaticism now is falling. Jin He's sister also realized her mistake all this time. With other congregation, she leaves. The technician has also completed his duties. Outside, the families of the congregation have gathered including Jin He, and then they welcome the family who are going home. Jin He and her sister finally meet again. The tears and laughter and regret made Go Len sadness too. At night, Jin He persuaded her sister to go to the hospital again, and her sister agreed. Du Ki with his luxury taxi then left. At the same time, the sect leader and his girlfriend also came to the port based on orders from Du Kai.
Soon, someone appeared and showed the way. That person opened the container and letting the sect leader come in. His girlfriend was confused but obey. When noticed, the person's face is Sung Chul, was the same as the ghost who had been disturbing the sect leader. Sung Chul locked the sect leader and his girlfriend from the outside. And the sect leader is confused to reconfirm Sung Chul's face. But there is nothing any response. Containers are transported and transferred to the ship. His girlfriend doesn't know where they are going. And Du Ki contacted. Du Ki claiming not to be a shaman and hoping that they will not see each other again. The sect leader still feels the presence of ghosts and his life is cursed. But Du Ki brings up the sect leader's crimes all this time. The sect leader is confused by what Musty does now, and Du Ki suggests that the sect leader choose a religion. After that, the call is ended. The sect leader is increasingly incomprehensible. He is still afraid of being haunted. Sum Chul and the team now go home. The taxi service is terminated. Go Yun has also brought sick followers to be treated. Go Yun sure the sect leader's church will definitely be expensive and can cover medical expenses for the congregation. Then Du Ki going home and did not join the other friends who will going to eat together. After the call is hung up, Ha Jun appeared to bring coffee. They chatted. Ha Jun wanted to ask for advice about him who had many younger brothers, but lately they have been beaten. Ha Jun obviously angry and want revenge, but Ha Jun doesn't know why the person hit his brother. They have no grudges and even did not know each other. Du Kai can't give his response, and Ha Jun says if maybe he will be friends with the person who beat his brother. Ha Jun hoping to rececognize the person, but according to Du Kai, Ha Jun and the person will not be able to make friends. Because of the way Ha Jun invites friends, that person will continue to beat his younger brother. Ha Jun then take a permission to Du Kai's toilet, and from there, Ha Jun checked further and found the photo of the case the police captain in Vietnam. Ha Jun even confused about how Du Kai got it, and according to him, Du Kai is outrageous, and soon Du Kai appeared. They stared at each other sharply. Sung Chul and his friend, who in season 1 were chief of prosecutor reunion. The prosecutor gave the document from Vietnam that had previously sent by Sung Chul to the deputy prosecutor office on behalf of the detective from the police. The chief prosecutor was confused whether the Sung Chul was disguised as a detective, but some chul but not explain, and the chief prosecutor then discussed about the case of Kang, who had a lot of property, but then donated all his property, and then found dead in the woods after living on the street. Chief prosecutor suspects that someone forced him to donate all his savings and faked his death Kang as a suicide. Someone seems to be covering up something and bribing the police. The chief prosecutor is worried that Sung Chul will be hurt if he deals with Kang's case, but he still agrees with the Sung Chul's actions helped others. After that Sung Chul gave the document to Du Kei, documents about the incident in Vietnam, then went at home. Ha Jun came to bring coffee and talked. Ha Jun asked for advice about himself who had many younger brothers, but recently was beaten. Ha Jun did not know why the person hit his younger brothers and wanted to revenge. Du Kai can't give his response, and Ha Jun considers befriending the person who beat his younger brother. But according to Du Kai, Ha Jun and the person will not be able to make friends, because from the Ha Jun's way invites friends. That person will continue to beat his younger brother. Ha Jun then permission to Du Kei's toilet, but when he went inside, Ha Jun found documents the case of the police captain in Vietnam. According to Ha Jun, Du Kei has been very outrageous, and then Du Kei appears questioning Ha Jun who has been in the toilet for quite a long time. But Ha Jun changes the conversation and suddenly remembers that if he has an important appointment and permission to leave. The next day, Ha Jun will take the senior police to the office. On the way, Ha Jun questioning the official documents of the case of police captain in Vietnam who can get into Du Ki's hands. Ha Jun sure that the senior police know about it, but the senior police do not understand the point. Ha Jun insists that Du Ke and his team are currently looking for him as the main mastermind of the incident in Vietnam. Ha Jun wanting to know why the senior police did not say anything to him. Because Ha Jun kept urging and disrespectful, senior police asks Ha Jun to be careful because Ha Jun is just a guard dog. When he arrived at the police station, Ha Jun followed the senior police to his room and threatened to kill him. The senior police's men who was outside was detained, not allowed to enter. The senior police was very scared, and Ha Jun who now warned the senior police to be careful. Ha Jun wanted the police immediately informed if he finds information about him. The police also understands. Ha Jun goes. At taxi headquarters, two technicians and other workers play games together. Until Go Lian arrives stopping the workers who are lazy in working hours, while Du Ki gets passengers to the hospital. When he arrives, Du Ki sees a man making a place to live in front of a hospital. A doctor as well as the director of the hospital came, and the man immediately do the surgery saying that the doctor was the murderer and forbade him to do surgery. Du Ki was confused and continued to observe. The doctor then gave money to the man. The doctor was sorry to see the man who seemed to have not eaten, but the man did not accept it and confirmed if the doctor was the murderer. 
the doctor's subordinates absolutely defended. Because in court the doctor was found not guilty, the argument was stopped by the doctor herself and asked that the man not be too noisy in the hospital very politely. The doctor then entered the hospital. The doctor's subordinate asked the man named Han to stop the oration mentioning that the doctor is murderer and forbid surgery, because if the doctor who stops working, the patient will lose. Han still believe if the doctor is guilty, even if the court takes their side. Han believe the truth of the doctor do the surgery to kill will be revealed. The doctor's subordinate insist also they do not falsify or hide evidence. Han more upset, but because they are threatened to be reported because of attack, Han ease his emotions. After that, Duke also left. Hao Jun also returned to the taxi headquarters while calling the senior police, who mentioned that if there was a detective who was not from the police force, asked to send documents about the case in Vietnam to someone in the prosecutor office, who that person did not work in the procuratorate, Hao Jun is disappointed with the senior police, because of the documents is now owned by the taxi driver, two technicians, and Go Yun pass by asking Hae Joon to lunch together, but Hae Joon refuses on the grounds that he has lunch. The senior police is also confused, and Hae Joon has a plan like the way the people who work at the taxi place. At night, Han who is drunk crash into other people and drop his food. Until he sees the sticker of the luxury taxi service, he is immediately called and do key, then picked him up. Han also tell of one year ago, his daughter was sick and was about to have surgery. Han encouraged his daughter and made sure that his daughter would return to health. Because the surgeon is a doctor and hospital director who was famous and often appeared on television, his daughter being calmer and asked to buy fish-shaped bread after the surgery, shortly the doctor appeared and guaranteed that the surgery would run very well. But Han felt a strange smell, but doesn't say anything and his daughter is immediately taken to the surgery room. Han waited to try to calm down, but there is blood bag came. Han little bit panic, until after the surgery is over. His daughter is unconscious. The doctor said that if the surgery went, Han is very grateful. But since that day, his daughter never regained consciousness, and Han protested to the hospital and wanted to see the doctor, but was blocked by the doctor's subordinates and the insurance agent. Han should have met the insurance agent to discuss his daughter's compensation. Han obviously is very angry because he doesn't want to discussing the issue of compensation. But his daughter who could not get up again, Han wanted to know what happened in the surgery room that day until the trial took place. Based on the surgery records, the chart of nurses and anesthesiologists can be ascertained if all medical activities during his daughter's surgery were not found irregularities. Han also swears that on the day of surgery his daughter used to smell alcohol on the doctor. But the lawyer has evidence that only Han who have a drinking problem, lawyer continued, if it happened to his daughter, is a side effect of anesthesia and could happen to one in 10,000 patients. And because the CCTV footage in the surgery room was formatted and the hospital is also not obliged to keep such footage. So the court ruled the case is dropped. Han's lawsuit is not accepted. The doctor is free and Han obviously doesn't accept. Two key and the team who heard are also confused by the case. There is victim, but no one responsible. According to Sung Chul, the case is strange. They had to find evidence if the doctor did malpractice. And the next day, Tu Ki took a fancy taxi and directions from Go Yun is going to the doctor, who is visiting the elderly with various media. The doctor was known to treat elderly patients who lived alone in the area. The doctor was also famous for doing many surgery, had business agreements with doctors at local welfare centers, and an insurance company consultant. Go Yun even confused there are many of the projects that the doctor handled. Her life are really productive. The doctor was well known by many people. After that, she would go home and get into Du Ki's taxi. On the way, the doctor asked to be turned on the radio because now is broadcasting live. The doctor became a resource person and was contacted by phone discussing about her self-volunteering who helped many people. After the event ended and the call was hung up, Du Ki then trying to open the conversation. Du Ki heard the conversation and salute the doctor who did a lot of good things. Du Ki also discussed about the man who protested in front of the hospital, but the doctor didn't want to discuss anything. When arrived at the hospital, the doctor paid with a credit card, but her hands trembled. Du Ki felt strange and Go Dian immediately checked the doctor's credit card, but find no transaction history the doctor bought an alcohol. Did Han's talk used to be a lie? While the doctor now is visiting elderly patients who have been surgeries on, he claimed to be healthy. He is moved because he had no family but the doctor wanted to treat them for free. They then going out and Du Ki heard the conversation between the doctor and the subordinates who are happy. One of the subordinates even bought a new car and flattered the doctor for being good to him. The doctor remained humble. Du Ki and Go Lian are getting confused. Everyone seemed to respect the doctor and they had not found anything bad. So after that, Sung Chul and the team met again. According to Sung Chul, the actions taken by the doctor must have been to save the patient's life and possibly for Han's daughter, there are unavoidable medical risks that could not be avoids. 
whether accidents caused by medical errors or malpractice, they are all unsure until some Chul makes the decision not to take the case. Go Yun and the two technicians obey him, and Du Kai stay silent. After that, while Du Qi is taking coffee, a man comes with a classy look. The man wants to borrow a coin and Du Qi was quite confused and then offered the coffee that the man received. He then checked the documents that Du Qi said about Han's lawsuit and introduced himself as a lawyer because he had been given a cup of coffee. The man so forced to take Du Qi's documents, guaranteeing that Du Qi would get answers to his confusion. The man also admitted that he wanted to take his belongings left there. And while waiting, he ran Han's documents which said from the beginning the doctors and hospital benefited because Han had no one. Du Qi seemed to realize with that thing. After giving his views on Han's case, the man then left, and Du Qi continued driving a taxi. He come to the hospital and Han just left. Han bought fish-shaped cake and returned to the hospital again with the situation still chaotic as usual. Han sat. His daughter has not recovered. He remembers when his daughter was running. Suddenly her legs hurt. Han who worried about approaching and his daughter was surprised because Han came without telling and giving a fish-shaped cake and then they went home together. On the way, Han had found out about the illness suffered by her daughter. Han advised her daughter to do surgery so that in the future her daughter can be health again, especially the doctor said that delaying the surgery would make Han's daughter condition worse. His daughter was afraid of surgery, but Han promises to buy used car after the surgery, Han getting more hysterical, remembers the memories. Meanwhile, Go Lian also come to the hospital and disguised as a janitor, she has contacted Du Qi to make a surprise. Shortly, the security alarm went on. The officer in the control room come out, became an opportunity to Go Lian to transfers the data. Go Lian believed there is something wrong with the hospital's case and intend to solve it. But when she wants to go out, Go Lian surprised because two technicians apparently also undercover, they have the same reason to come to the hospital. Now Go Lian immediately works to investigate all the files stored in the hospital. CCTV be able to hack. But when looking for Han's case, Go Yun found nothing. Go Yun so confused, she felt that what she did was in vain. Until Du Qi called again and wanted to know what surprise that Go Yun wanted to say. And now Go Yun canceled the surprise. She was failed, found a clue at the hospital. But Du Qi said would be coming soon, which made Go Yun and the two technicians a little bit confused. They just found out if Du Qi was apparently at the hospital too. Meanwhile, Sung Chul, who is at the headquarters, doesn't seem his team's presence. Sung Chul sure that his team is investigating Han's case that they shouldn't have taken. Back to Du Qi, he come to the hospital and disguised himself as an officer to search for medical records belonging to Han's daughter, but not found until Du Qi hearing the sound of dripping water, which apparently had medical records that seemed to be deliberately damaged. The file belonged to Han's daughter, but the writing was very unclear. Du Qi so curious for what really happened at the crime scene at that time. Du Qi then observed the surgery room and planned to enter it. Du Qi disguised himself as a doctor and helped patients who were going to be surgery. The nurse being misbehaving with Du Qi's good looks, who thought that Du Qi is a new doctor. And when in the surgery room, two nurses entered and would take over, before the door closed. Du Qi also entered and replaced his glass attached to the camera. But when the camera turned on, the alarm sounded. Du Qi obviously panicked. Go Lian believed the alarm is on because it detected an active camera. Du Qi who wanted to come out, heard the doctor's voice which made Du Qi immediately hide. The doctor come in and asked her subordinate to guard outside, while she would check inside and collect all the officer. The doctor often warned that the room should not have cameras. She wanted to know who the officer who brought the camera, but no one wanted to confess. Go Lian then turned off Du Qi's camera. The alarm stopped sounding. The subordinates are sure if their camera detection device is damaged. The doctor is not sure and asked for a recheck. The doctor then going out and checked the cabinet where Du Qi was hiding. A small closet there was no one. And when she wanted to check the cabinet in Du Qi's place, alarm went back on. The doctor approached her subordinate who are still sure if their detected device is broken. The alarm stopped turning on and the doctor continued to check the cabinet. But Du Qi has gone. Go Hyun even confused why the surgery room installed camera detector. After that, Du Qi meet Han and explained about the camera detector at the hospital. Han sure that if the installation of the camera detector must be done by her, Han needed a video. If what the doctor did was malpractice, Han come to the hospital with a camera and immediately expelled. Han got a suspended sentence for entering someone else's property without permission. Du Qi and Go Lian then thought about outsmarting the camera detector device at the hospital. Go Lian believes that if the doctor is deliberate, so that no one records any activities at the hospital. Sung Chul also finds medical bills for Han's daughter. The totals nearly $60,000. Han actually could make an insurance claim and get compensated even more money, but Han refuses to do it, Han preferring to take a loan. 
Duki is still curious about Surgery Roo and will be back there again. Duki has a plan by becoming a hospital patient and will later enter the hospital. Duki asked Go En to make him suffer from the same disease as Han's daughter, and worse, if Duki is really do the surgery, Duki asks Go En to find out what happened to him. Next, Duki and Sung Chol work together to create an accident scenario. Even though minor crash, Duki felt very painful and immediately rushed to the hospital. Previously, Duki also asked Go An to activate the camera on the glasses after three minutes Duki entered the surgery room. So that when the camera turned on inside, the doctor and the officer are sure if the alarm who turn on, because of a broken detection device, now Duki entered the surgery room, Go Eun turning off the camera during three minutes. Into the waiting period, Go Eun is quite worried, until Duki is sedated and his eyes slowly blurred. The doctor then entered and after Duki was unconscious, the doctor took Duki's glasses and questioned why the other officers did not check Duki who was still wearing glasses. The glasses were put on, and Go Eun was impatient. Turning on the glasses again triggers the alarm to go on and thinking it is broken. The alarm is immediately turned off, Go Eun can see what is happening inside, and the doctor calls someone to enter, Go Eun confused, and the person who will do the surgery for Duki. While the real doctor leaves, Duki is already unconscious. And then the scene shows Duki is in the surgery room. And after making sure Duki is unconscious, the real doctor comes out and another person who now took over to surgery Duki. When the surgery is about to take place, the phone rang which turned out that the person who should be surgery is not Duki. Duki was only slightly injured. And after knowing that if the patient was swapped, Duki not become surgery on. The original patient who would be surgery, after waking up, Duki is confused and Go Eun realize there is an inappropriate floor plan in the surgery room. Duki also before being unconscious, seeing that the person who is going to do the surgery him was not the real doctor, then the doctor met and saw Duki could walk normally, making the doctor a little confused. Duki pretended to be sick, and the doctor admitted a mistake in their system that made Duki almost surgery. And the doctor says that if actually their hospital doesn't accept traffic accident patients, only special surgery patients, the doctor suggested to move to another hospital. But because seeing Duki seemed to be healthy, the doctor would take care of Duki's back home and immediately Duki prevented. Duki admitted that he is still in pain and showed incision scars when almost surgery, and the doctor will still let Duki then go. At night, Duki come to the place the doctor's subordinate, who had previously did the surgery on him. The subordinate to the building were a small company that when go uncheck, the company produced supplies and medical equipment. The doctor's subordinate cleaned up the traces of blood on his clothes and then going to his workplace. Shortly, he got a phone call from the doctor who asked him to come immediately. The subordinate left, and Duki then came to the subordinate. There was no one there, and checked the table of the subordinate. Duki made sure that the doctor's subordinate is not doctor. Strangely, why the subordinates authorized to do surgery and even have a proper surgery schedule who actually did by the doctor? The person who should be given the title as the person who did the most surgery was not the doctor, but her subordinates, then Sung Chol, and the team discussed the irregularities of the doctor and her subordinates. According to Sung Chol, being a doctor will be paid expensive, so she does a lot of surgery and assigns her subordinate who work. The doctor will save energy and earns a lot of money. Go Eun also got information that the previous doctor changed name four years ago. And in the previous name, the doctor was involved in a case of suspension of license as a doctor and prohibited of surgery. But now under a different name, the doctor still does the same thing. Then the doctor meets the subordinate who feels very guilty of being late. The technician disguised as a waiter and put the eavesdropping device. After that leave, the doctor and the subordinate discussed the schedule of seven surgeries for the next two days. The doctor asked the subordinates to come on time, and then the subordinate permission if on the day of the surgery is the anniversary of his mother's death. He wanted permission not to do surgery, but the doctor did not accept any excuse and will fire the subordinate then look for a replacement. The subordinate is clearly afraid of losing his job, so force him to not be able to get permission. He apologizes and the doctor brings up her kindness, pays the bill for the surgery and buys all the medical equipment from the subordinate's company. The doctor will pay for the drink also directly the subordinate prevent her. He also brought the company's credit card and would use the credit card to pay for doctor drinking expenses. The doctor also reminded the current surgery schedule, then leave. Go Hyun knows how the doctor can drink by using her subordinate's credit cards, and from the conversation, it means that the doctor will do the surgery even though at this time, she was drunk. Duki immediately rushed. The other doctor's subordinate also come to pick up the subordinate who is going to carry out the surgery, but his new car was suddenly damaged by another car, and he was forced to chase the car. Duki appeared and the subordinate who will do the surgery come. 
Duki claimed to be the one who would pick up the subordinate. And on the way, Duki immediately showed the recording of himself when he was surgery first. The subordinate immediately panicked, asked who the Duki is, and Duki fastened the seat belt of the subordinate tightly. Duki is sure that if the subordinate used his surgery hand's daughter, Duki wanted to know what was happened at that time. The subordinate also tells, at that time, in the surgery room of Han's daughter, the subordinate accidentally cut another part and caused blood to leak. Her blood pressure decreased and they needed extra blood. In the midst of the panic, the doctor appeared and casually took over the situation. Outside, Han was increasingly worried about the officer carrying the blood bag, and the doctor finally managed to solve Han's daughter problem, but unfortunately could not get up again. After that, the doctor talked to her subordinate. The doctor invited the subordinates to come along drink, also and explain if what happened to Han's daughter was a side effect of anesthetic. That incident could happen to anyone and unfortunately happened to Han's daughter. The doctor asked the subordinate to forget the incident of the day and focused on the next surgery. The subordinate obeyed in fear. After that, Han's daughter came out and after explaining if Han's daughter would soon get better. Han was very happy and thankful. Now Duki takes the subordinate to the shore of the lake. Duki hates the subordinate who keeps silent, even during this time, seeing Han protests more than a year since the surgery. But the subordinate admitted that if he said anything, it would not change everything. And from the confession of the other subordinate before him, the subordinate was fired and never got a job from any company. Their name was blacklisted. The subordinates could not defend himself and feared that they would end up the same as the old subordinates. Duki did not justify this attitude. The subordinates remained guilty even though helpless, but still sided with the crime. Making people like the doctor will continue to do evil, because she gets support. While the other subordinate did not get information from the subordinates who were supposed to do the surgery, the doctor asked to find a new medical equipment seller and fire the old subordinates. And again the remaining payment to the subordinates could not be paid at all. Duki then back to the hospital and discussed remotely with Go Eun, until Duki called by Ha Jun who was confused by Duki's whereabouts at the hospital. Duki claimed to be healthy while Ha Jun came to the hospital, just visited his friend, and Duki discussed as if the person Ha Jun had previously told. Ha Jun had decided not to be friends with that person until Go Eun and Duki woke up there was no one in the waiting room even though the surgery is in progress. The next day, the doctor went to the elderly and provided medical care. The elderly was a little confused because he felt that there was nothing wrong with the, his health, but the doctor suggested for surgery, and because this elderly did not know anything about medical matters, he apologized and will obey to surgery. Do key and go unheard, the doctor has ordered schedule of surgery for the elderly who should not need surgery, and in front of the media and other colleagues, the doctor's attitude was very good, and the elderly who the doctor will surgery is the elderly who will get the largest insurance compensation from the elderly insurance money, that the doctor gets the wealth. The doctor benefited because the elderly that she cared have no family. The doctor is the perpetrator as well as the guardian of the elderly, taking an advantage of the existing legal loopholes. While on the other side, Sung Chul and two technicians come to the mountains and recorded the calm atmosphere in that place. The recording was played to Han's daughter, the place where used to want Han's daughter to visit when could drive a car, and hoped that hearing the sound could make kid Han's daughter quickly wake up from her coma. Sung Chul then talked to Han who was very grateful. Sung Chul said that all of Han's daughter medical expenses would be covered completely. At different times, the doctor played golf and had got a new subordinate who had a medical device company. The doctor asked that person to do surgery, the person was confused, and because the doctor threatened to find another company, the new subordinate obeyed and would practice how to surgery on someone via the internet, the subordinate also told to make a company credit card. After that leave, two technicians were also there and observed. The doctor had received a replacement for the old subordinates, but then got a report if the elderly they were caring for is unconscious. The doctor returned to the hospital and examined the elderly patient. After that explained to the nurse if the patient's condition is due to age is old, the doctor said the nurse did nothing and just took care of him. Then the doctor asked her subordinate to contact the police if the elderly patient died later, and said if the elderly died of chronic illness, then arranged his funeral at the regional office, and all the patient's documents were also sorted out. The subordinate obey her and do key and go in who is observing how inhumane the doctor's actions. The subordinate then took the patient's documents to a place that was accidentally dropped water from a leaky pipe. Soon, the lights went out, and Duki appeared with an iron fist. The subordinate was confused. Duki immediately beat him up. After that, Duki contacted Sung Chul and asked for help. They had to make the doctor become famous. So then Sung Chul, Go Lun, and two technicians disguised as a hospital officer. Duki is still a patient, and everyone has their own duties. 
Go Lian becomes an administrative officer, one technician becomes a janitor and another technician becomes a security officer and prohibits anyone from passing into the patient's room. Sum Chol takes an elderly patient who is unconscious. After everything is done, Du Ke then decided to stop treatment. He claimed to be healthy and leave. In different places, the doctor is releasing a book about her story of volunteering in a slum for the elderly. Many asked for autographs and doctors' names were increasingly melted by the community. After finished releasing the book, continue to live televised interview sessions, the host is very amazed by doctor even mentioning that if the doctor had just donated all the hospital's profits to all the elderly who lived alone, the doctor is even confused, did not expect. But in public, she could not refute anything. After the event, the doctor immediately contacted the subordinates, questioning about the donation of all hospital profits. The subordinates only received a letter from the administration that signed by the doctor, but the doctor denied it. Apparently previously, the technician came and asked for the doctor's signature, which was immediately go on further process. The doctor is very angry with her careless subordinate. The doctor wanted her all money back, but unfortunately this could not be done. The doctor wanted to talk to the administration, and soon another call come. The health insurance reviewer inspect the hospital. The doctor immediately come to the hospital and was confused about what happened. She approached the officer and asked. The officer explaining if they got a report if the hospital reused disposable injections. The doctor yelled at it. They had never done such a thing. But the officer others find disposable injections. Doctors so blamed their employees and wants to know who did it. The doctor felt she was being framed and apparently there were other allegations of drug smuggling and the use of expired drugs. All the evidence that officer found stated that the doctor is guilty. But the doctor continued to deny it. The doctor believed someone framed her and invite to see CCTV to show the truth. But when checking the CCTV, the system has been formatted. The doctor is clear annoyed. Which fool people made such a system? The subordinate said that if the doctor is the one who made the rule, the doctor wants the CCTV recording to be formatted every two weeks so that it cannot be recovered. The doctor is still trying defending herself. And because she was increasingly cornered, she even do a violence. And then the police come. They received a report from the old subordinate who had surrendered himself to the police station overnight. The news about the doctor and the hospital was immediately spread. The doctor is immediately secured. The hospital is suspended and the lawsuit of Han accepted again by the court. At night, Hajun entered Du Ki's house and we check further. Until Hajun finds Du Ki's personal belongings. While the doctor returns to the hospital, which is now officially closed, she secures all her drinks and intends to pay for all, and already then fix her name back. The doctor will repeat her business from the beginning, and then the alarm goes on. The doctor is very annoyed, and Du Kai then appears in a surgery suit. The doctor is confused who is Du Kai, but Du Kai ensures that the doctor will be cured so as not to repeat her crimes. The doctor remember if Du Kai is her fake patient, and Du Kai continues, if it seems that the doctor's disease cannot be cured. The doctor attacks Du Kai, who is easily Du Kai fight back. The doctor helpless and put where the patient is usually surgery. Now the doctor can feel how to be in the patient's position. Du Ki will start the surgery. The doctor is still trying to negotiate. She will make Du Ki as the deputy director of the hospital and promise huge benefits if he wants to cooperate with her. But Du Kai doesn't want to trust the doctor. Du Ki bringing up what this doctor's done to the patients who believe can be cured. The doctor's negotiation is unsuccessful, while Han now recalls the memories with his daughter. Until finally his daughter comes back to wake up. Han is very happy. He is very happy. In another time, Ha Jun contacted the senior police and has sent a photo of the car. The senior police has also arranged in his car. He is actually worried to go that far. But Ha Jun makes sure if he has to take care of Du Ki and his flock in the same way. At night, Du Ki comes home. The luxury taxi service ends, they appreciate each other. But Go Un will hear noise from Du Ki's car. Go He Un very panicked. Du Ki is also confused. Their communication signal is disturbed, increasingly aware of the irregularity. Du Ki's car turns, and as the two techniques follow, Du Ki's car exploded. Sum Chul also confused and panicked. Ha Jun orchestrated the explosion. Go He Un and two technicians tried to get closer to Du Ki's car. But the explosion got bigger, they couldn't do anything. They couldn't save Du Kai. Earlier, at the hospital, after meeting with Du Kai, Ha Jun to the parking lot and seeing Du Ki's car. Du Ki died and Go Yun are very sad. The technician also still did not expect Du Ki's death. Ha Jun also present come to the funeral and seeing Du Ki's friends unwilling for the death of Du Ki. Ha Jun, on the contrary, he is happy because he designed the explosion of Du Ki's car in cooperation with the senior police because Ha Jun suspicious of the investigation documents in Vietnam got by Du Ki. The scene that happened clearly made Go Yun, the two technicians, and Sung Chol very unexpected. The next day, Ha Jun practiced hitting a punching bag while on the phone with the senior police who helped Ha Jun blow up Du Ki's car.
the senior police is a little bit upset because he had to dirty his hands for Hajun. Hajun said if the police was involved and asked, check the financial records of all guests who come to Dookie's funeral. If there is mastermind behind Dookie's actions, that person will definitely show up because Dookie is dead. The person inside the bag who hit by Hajun is expelled, and then Hajun sends subordinates outside the police to check Dookie's funeral. According to Hajun's orders, they check all garbage to be later identified. Then files from the building's CCTV were also put in an envelope and written secret on it and then given to someone called the boss and wear a ring. The next day, the senior police asked his subordinate to check the background and fingerprints of the person listed in the document. The subordinate was confused about the case what is handled, but the senior police confirmed that the document was confidential and the subordinate should not have asked. The subordinates obey him. And then at the headquarters, Go Hyun, the two technicians and Sung Chul, who is waiting for someone's arrival using a luxury taxi. The person in the taxi was Du Ki. He is not dead yet and still in good condition. So on the day of the incident, Go Hyun detected a strange sound in Dookie's car, and Dookie also felt something odd. He took a quick look at other cars, then turned suddenly and immediately got out of the car. The car exploded. Go Hyun and two technicians did not realize that Dookie had come out. They were very panicked. Other people wearing rings with the car were ordered to observe Dookie's and left immediately. After knowing the car explodes according to the plan, Go Hyun, who wants to approach directly, stopped by Dookie. They are all still fine. Sung Chul in the relief to hear if all the team was not injured. After that, Du Ki, two technicians, and Go Hyun remotely checked the car that exploded. There was an explosive under the car. Du Ki sure if anyone knew about the luxury taxi service and hated them. Du Ki obviously wouldn't stay silent. He wanted to know who is the person and arranges a plan for his funeral to be held. Du Ki must die. According to the wishes of the person who made the explosion, Du Ki asks his team to focus on paying attention to the people who come to the funeral. So after that, Go Lian and two technicians act as if Du Ki has dead. The technician even confused with Go Lian, who is to animate her cries. But they realized that seeing Du Ki among the flowers was very pitiful. Du Ki was also in the car and replaced Go Lian's position. Observed from afar what happened, the photos that Go Lian and two technicalities were got, immediately checked by Du Ki, a stranger who Du Ki didn't recognize at all, but came to the funeral. Du Ki also finally understand how Go Eun has felt all this time behind the scenes. That is, so very worried. And after that Du Ki sees someone handing over documents wearing the same ring as the photos of the people in the Vietnam case documents. Du Ki immediately follows the car, which is aimed at the nightclub, while Sung Chol carries Ash to the grave. The police's subordinate observe and confirm if Du Ki is really dead. After that, the senior police gave a report to Ho Jun, and there was nothing unusual about Du Ki, even the people who came to his funeral. Hajun felt something was wrong and instead wanted to kill one more people. But Hajun didn't seem to have time to do it because someone called Bishop will arrive soon. Hajun is a bit confused because he was not told nothing and the senior police conveyed the Bishop's message to Hajun to stop messing around and focus on work. Shortly, the executives come for the meeting. The senior police also forgot to tell Hajun they are all wearing special rings and the senior police then turn on the device such as a camera and then they pray together. After that, Ha Jun going to the office and handed over the resignation letter. Meeting with Sung Chol, the attitude of Ha Jun now has changed drastically and is not polite. Ha Jun brought up Sung Chol's kindness first when Ha Jun's car was Ha Jun's accident. Sung Chol doesn't scold him and instead calmed him down. Ha Jun felt Sung Chol was the first person who was sincere and kind to him. His kindness was what saved Sung Chol Ha Jun away and feeling that the taxi headquarters is really quiet after Du Ki was gone. Ha Jun approaches Du Ki's taxi car and regrets that they can't be friend. Meanwhile, Du Ki returns to the base and meets with Sung Chul, Go Lian, and the two technicians. Go Lian immediately show foreign identities who came to the funeral. Four people who work at a club. Sung Chul once showed a letter of resignation of Ha Jun, and Sung Chul also realized that Ha Jun has been very suspicious in many ways, starting from almost to the basement because it is strange if Ha Jun accidentally finds the place. Ha Jun also took pictures of all the taxi employee information and also from the resume. Everything is fake. There is no one named Ha Jun, but his cell phone now is inactive and could be the one who tried to kill Du Ki is Ha Jun. Du Ki remembers. At that time he observed Ha Jun too. Their suspicion to Ha Jun is getting bigger and because they didn't know where Ha Jun now, they could do an investigation in the nightclub. At night, many people who wanted to enter to the nightclub. Du Ki also intended to enter but were stopped by Go Lian because Du Ki and Kauf look like people who never came to the club. The two technicians who will enter the club have a more eccentric look, 
but go in doubt if it will succeed. The two technicians who will enter are even blocked by guards and are not allowed to enter, even try to bribe even two techniques that are given money and are sure that the purpose of the two technicians is a karaoke place, and then they are leave. Feel like they failed? Go Bian saying that Duke has gone into the building through another entrance because of the two technicians who distracted the guard, which is Duke on the rooftop of the building and suddenly three people appeared. Two people attacked one person until battered, seriously injured, and because continued to be tortured, Dukai couldn't bear and immediately help the persecuted person. Two people easily Dukai defeated. But after that, the injured person was even upset with Dukai who's saving him. He previously installed the camera, and the plan he tried to make messed up. He was annoyed to Dukai, and then left. Dukai and Go Nun, obviously very confused. Dukai will look for access to another door, and Go Nun will help the other guard appear in panic seeing his two friends helpless. The next day, the man who was beaten by two guards is a reporter and has a good record as an influential journalist, but the reporter was once caught taking bribes and fired from the company. Ko Hyun suggesting that Du Ki should not get too involved with the journalist, and then Du Kai ready in his new clothes. Go Hyun believes this time Du Ki will be the center of attention at the club. At night, Du Ki is picked up by the agent to get inside the club. Go Hyun can help Du Ki enter the club because paid a reservation worth $3,000. And if there are people who pay higher, Dukey can be expelled. Only Dukey is the most neatly dressed there, making the agent who delivered Dukey suspect that Dukey must have come to the place for the first time. And then a woman CEO of the entertainment venue thought that Dukey is one of the worker there because of his suit. Dukey sure that in fact Go Nan also never went to the nightclub, continued the journey. Dukey is invited to sit in the cheapest seat. In front of him, there are many choices for the tables, the closer to the stage, the more expensive. Dukey then seeing the two security guards who had previously come to the funeral. Go he unworried if Dukey would be found out. But Dukey sure that the two officers would not remember someone's face, just from the funeral photos. The agent come back close, and they chatted further. She guessed from the way Dukey's dressed. According to her, Du Kai needed a lot of effort to get a lot of money to get into the place. The agent claimed to often see various types of people, from nobles until slaves, and many people who came to that place were people who pretended to be nobles even though slaves, and for people at the top are nobles, because they would not want to associate with poor people. Then people brought food that was paraded special come, only nobles who can order it, from go and get. The price of ordering food, it is worth $180,000, even more expensive than the rent of Go Yun's house. Dukey also sees again the person who used to be at his funeral, and then the agent got a phone call, and then she let Dukey had fun first before his seat Dukey was replaced by the person who paid more, and then Dukey is going around seeing the security guard going up to the second floor. Dukey followed, only those who could go to the second floor were only VIP members, and when he wanted to go back, Dukey heard an artist and entered the room. Dukey had a plan and going straight into the room that the artist went, Go Leon obviously very panicked. Dukey claimed to be artist's friend. The artist is obviously very confused and don't know who Dukey is. Go Eun immediately look for the artist's information. Dukey is almost kicked out by the officer. But Go Eun gives an information to the artist's old schoolmate, and Dukey immediately acts as that person and knows what happened in the past to convince Dukey to show their photos, making the artist remember him again. Even though got confused, the artist also recognized Dukey as his friend. The officer left. Dukey is welcome to join them. After that, they continue to have fun, while Duki going around. Duki realized if there are students school who entered the club using his mother's credit card, Duki immediately reported to the police, continued to check. Duki entered the empty room and other officers also entered, Duki hid in toilet, peeping the two officers who are now are being punished. Previously, the two officers was beaten by Duki, because beating journalists on the rooftop, the head of security ordered to beat the journalist for having a reason, and again, the person who beat the two officers is still unknown. And soon, the, the head of security got a phone call from someone else and asked to be sent number. The agent then came in and wanted to use the toilet, but it was locked. Duki then going out and pretended to be confused by the previously empty room into many people. Duki, who's still known to the agent as the artist's friend, reasoned that if he wanted to take a pup, and in the artist's place, there was already someone else. Duki apologized for entering another room and then left. Go Lan, who was in the car, also confused by the police who did not enter the club. Even though Duki had reported if there were minors who entered there, Duki also now gets a phone call and the head of security also knows if it is Duki, the person who reported about minors entering the club. Other officers were ordered to secure Duki. Duki was taken out and beaten. Duki was confused about what happened, but he continued to be beaten. The police in there remained silent, even though violence broke out in front of them. Duki then pretended to be in pain, 
and the head of security called the police, allowed the police to arrest Du Ki. They cooperated with each other, and Du Ki, who was handcuffed for obstructing business, Du Ki, Go Hyun, and the two technicians were obviously very confused. While Sung Chol came to a man who helped him investigate the bomb who was in Du Ki's car, and from his observations, the type of bomb was sourced from the Ministry of National Defense and the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Security which the person can conclude at this time the bomb confirmed from the special unit of counterterrorism police element. Sung Chol remember Kang's case, according to the head, the prosecutor was quite strange. Because the police covered up the case as a suicide, there was a corruption investigation. Sung Chol is very grateful to the person who helped him. And the man mentioned that Sung Chol who had contributed greatly to helping his family so far. Du Ki was also at the police station and was questioned. Du Ki was confused even though he was the one who reported, but was arrested. The police said that Du Ki was accused of obstruction business and destruction of property. The police also felt that they did not receive any reports from Du Ki about minors entering the club. The police asked Du Ki not to make up stories. Du Ki was convinced that this police is not a good person. Other police then got a phone call, and after that Du Ki was taken to temporary prison. For allegedly harassing club employees, Du Ki is clearly confused. The police further confirmed that Du Ki now is really in trouble. Du Ki was even arrested, Go Hyun, and the two technicians were clearly confused. After Du Ki's departure, the ambulance came, the medical officer removed the minor, who was actually fine, but was forced to leave. The child's mother got angry and took the credit card, then the mother would sue the club for allowing minors to enter. The mother then left, the head of security is angry at the officers because they shouldn't have banned minors from entering. But the officer said that if the child who had just entered paid through the agent at a high price, the chairman provided to clean the agent's board and cancel the entire schedule, Go Leon who heard still didn't understand. The agent who passed the minor was obviously upset to the head of security because he had canceled all the schedules, the agent felt very lost. But the head of security didn't care because the agent was negligent in letting minors in equally emotional. The head of security emphasized that anything could happen in that place, as long as it shouldn't be involving minors, because if found out there will be no way out, the agent still doesn't care and beat the head of security. The conflict stops when their superiors arrive, the head of club. The head of the club doesn't want chaos and doesn't want to take care of the problems of his subordinates. The head of security then gets a similar call from the police, just when Duki is questioned, then Duki was put in jail for allegedly harassing club employees. Go Wen is still investigating the person who reported Du Kai, but seeing the journalist who had been beaten come to the police station and release Du Ki, the journalist named Kim, wanted to say thank you. But Du Ki brought up if Kim was also ungrateful when saved. Kim also offers a video recording if Du Ki wants to treat him to a drink. Du Ki obey him. While watching the video Kim gets, the video shows a female agent who only arrived after Du Ki was taken by the police. The female agent made a false report if she was harassed by Du Ki. And from that video, Du Ki can be released. Kim also can't stop thinking about Du Ki who dares to report minors to the police. Du Ki then asks about the reason for Kim's beating on the rooftop of the building and why Kim recorded it. But Kim doesn't explain, making Du Ki guess, maybe Kim deliberately recorded when hit to threaten or to make an agreement. Kim instead suggesting that Du Ki left the club for Du Ki's own good. Kim then left. After that Du Ki and the team are discussing. Sung Chol worried about Du Ki who fortunately could be free from the police station because of Kim. Du Ki was sure. The police cooperated with the club. And the owner of the club, Go Hyun knew are six people. But those six people were just puppets. The real owner was still unknown. Du Ki would return to the club. And because become a customer made him limited to investigating, Du Ki will use other methods. At different times, the artist and the senior police drink together. They are very close. And the artist plans to invite the police to the release of his new album. The artist will provide a beautiful artist for the police. Then the head of the club comes to report the month's income which is worth more than $5 million. Every month their income is always increased, and they are very happy. Meanwhile, the club security officers now are one by one eliminated by two technicians, and Du Kai, so that the head of security was scolded by the superiors because they lacked people to guard the club. The superior would look for a new security officer. The next day, he came to the fitness center to look for security officers. There was Du Kai's presence when was training disturbed by two people who wanted to use his tools. Du Kai didn't accept and the fight happened. Two against one Du Ki, one making the superior interested in Du Ki's character. In short, Du Ki was chosen to be the new security officer. The head of security little bit surprised to see Du Kai. Because previously Du Ki reported the child in underage to the police, Du Ki apologizes and reasons if he doesn't like bad children. So he wants to make the bad boy get rewarded. But that strange reason makes the head of security want to beat Du Ki. And stopped by the superior, the superior is happy with Du Ki. And if he finds a minor again, 
Dookie must report to him, not to the police. After that, Dookie is given direction and duties that must be done while being a security officer. Dookie is labeled with a name with the number 9, and also explained the rules of guests who can enter. All women are allowed to enter except ugly women. Men who are allowed to enter are only VIPs who usually use special suits, then security officers are ready to work, including Dookie. And when there is chaos, the senior officer Dookie forbids interfering according to the rules of their chairman. Dookie, so they all ask their leader room, which makes the senior confused. Dookie reasoned that he wanted to report according to the chairman's order. If there was chaos, the senior also realized that Dookie seemed to be the type of liquor. And then the female CEO of the entertainment venue came and still remembered the figure of Dookie who was claimed to be a guest. But now Dookie started to be a guard. The woman was quite interested in Dookie making the senior confused. After that, Dookie come to Go Hyun, and the two technicians are disguised selling books in front of the club. Dookie could not find an office inside the club, and the association was seen by the head of security. He is approached, and Dookie immediately drove away, forced the two technicians to leave not to sell there again. The chairman who came, Dookie gave an explanation. If the bookseller there blocked the guest's parking space, the chairman is in Dookie's side, and the two technicians left. After that, the chairman asked how Dookie got to know the female CEO of the entertainment venue, that Dookie himself did not know who the woman is. The chairman thought Dookie was joking. The female CEO remembered Dookie's number, and then invites Dookie back in, the drape procession, and from now on Dookie is assigned to mark VIP guests. Dookie must protect the bottle according to the number. Dookie starts working following the people who brought bottle number 9 to take care of them, they are taken to another room, and Dookie sees the female CEO who is not focused on the phone with the Hajun who just arrived at the club. Dookie is still confused, and after lining up, Dookie was even called out by his senior. The senior was annoyed with Dookie who could be recognized by the female CEO. Even the senior himself had not been recognized by an important person in the club. He doesn't accept and asks to exchange name tag, Dookie willing to do it, and the senior assigned his work. When go out, Ha Jun just arrived and glanced at Dookie. Outside Dookie sees two officer carrying girl, and now Dookie's job is to drive the car. While in the club, the female CEO realizes that if the number 9 changes people, the mood of this woman immediately changes and destroys the other bottles. Ha Jun so calms down and says that at this time Bishop is on pilgrimage and orders them to take care of CEO carefully and to make the CEO mood in good condition. Ha Jun wants to make a bet, the CEO, and then calls three officers to fight Ha Jun. If a June loses, then the three officers will get money. The CEO so very happy. The fight begin, and Ha June brutally beats up until injured. The CEO is even more excited to see Ha June win the fight. While Duki now is told to go to the hotel, Duki realizes if anyone follows and asks for help, go uncheck it. Which apparently the car that follows is belong to Kim. Duki directly changed the direction of the car and explained if now being followed, Kim's car also crashed and tried to stop Duki's car. But Duki was able to fight back which made Kim's car stopped in the middle of the traffic light. Duki immediately pushed the car so as not to be hit and two guards immediately beat Kim. But Duki helped Kim making Kim even more confused. Kim immediately asked Duki to take the woman in the car to the hospital. In short, the woman got treatment, her blood would be examined. Duki and Kim then talked together. Duki and Kim both asked why they related to the club. That Kim believes is currently the woman they brought in is exposed to drugs. And if Kim doesn't stop Duki, what happens next? The woman will be harassed. She can call the police but will be useful. The nurse coming and telling if the woman brought in is exposed to drugs. The nurse has also contacted the police making Kim upset. It is mandatory if the nurse has to call the police if the patient is positive for drugs. Sure enough, shortly. After that the woman was taken by the police for violation of the drug rules. Kim then left. Duki also got news from Go Eun if the two officers they beat would wake up soon. Duki returned to the car, and the two officers woke up panicked because of the woman they brought nothing. Duki pretended to be in pain and was confused too. After that Duki came to Kim's place, which made Kim confused because Duki knows his address. Duki doesn't explain and went straight into Kim's house. During this time, Kim collecting a lot of information about the club. After that Duki wanted to know what Kim was really doing. Kim didn't know who is Duki and what will Duki do, but because he realizes that Duki saved him in traffic light, Kim tells if a police dies because of him. Police that he knows is one of the few honest police he knows, he is declared suicidal. But Kim knows that if someone killed him, last year, the police gets an appreciation for the case which they handle, and Kim's friend gets the most contribution. After that, Kim comes and gives congratulation. Kim will make his police friend to the news as a hero who eradicates 20 kilograms of drugs. Kim gives the documents he gets related to large-scale drugs in the nightclub. 
the police is a bit distrustful at first. But Kim says to find out the real information was the police's job. Kim and then gave the pen that had the recording device. And if it's for what Kim said was true, Kim promised to treat his police friend. But his friend said that he is doing the investigation not for the sake of drink, but to make sure if there was his crime. Until at night, Kim got a phone call from his friend who terrified. What Kim said was true. The nightclub is a place of crime. His friend promised to come to Kim after confirming what he saw. At this time, all his friend believed is only Kim. Kim had no time to respond, and the next day, his friend was found dead. The police concluded his death as a suicide due to an illegal debt in various places. Kim who attending funerals clearly asked the police not to lie. Kim knew that his friend would not kill himself. Kim promised to prove his point. Kim began to investigate and cooperate with other police, but the police he invited to cooperate was transferred to chemistry. Until he realized if he had given him a recording device pen-shaped, and in the police report there is no such pen, Kim so tried to get into the club repeatedly. He tried his best to find more information, and one day, he got a phone call who had information about the police who committed suicide, Kim, and the caller meeting. Kim was given a document that when opened in the office, contained strange photos and bribes. Kim was framed. The police immediately came to arrest Kim because he was accused of taking bribes. Kim's career as an influential journalist was destroyed instantly. And honestly, the reason Kim filmed his action when he was beaten by club officials at the rooftop, because Kim hoped to be killed. So if the video footage spread, the case of his police friend's death would be reopened. Kim is really sad, and Du Ki then left without saying anything. When Kim checks it, Du Ki left a sticker of luxury taxi service. Du Ki explained about Kim to the other team. At first, they were quite scared because Du Ki had been in danger many times even almost died. But Sung Chol was sure that their presence was indeed to help people like Kim. They also agreed to help Kim. Kim come to the playing machine and play luxury taxi game. Kim agreed to take revenge on the people in the club who killed his police friend. Du Ki now is preparing with his luxury taxi car, assisted by Go Hyun, the two technicians and Sung Chol, they will start their service. And the scene shows when Ha Jun applied for a job as a taxi driver, he claimed that the place was the same as the place the person who raised him when he was child. The reason of Ha Jun proposed at that place, he used to spend a lot of time alone since childhood. Ha Jun hoped that people would look for him. And by becoming a taxi driver people would definitely look for him. Sung Chul also accepted Ha Jun as a taxi driver. But Ha Jun resigned. Ha Jun's attitude that used to be good changed drastically. Sung Chul then checked the taxi trip records driven by Ha Jun. The taxi often came to a place. So after that Sung Chul came to the place, but found nothing. Sung Chul going back and ran into Ha Jun. They didn't see each other. Now Sung Chul and the team has compiled a linkages of people who are in the club. If five people leave the club only part of the organization. There are people above them as the original owner who remained hidden. Sung Chul also added the police captain who in the early episodes was doing business in Vietnam and was killed by shot. He is also being a part of the business. Go Eun then checked the CCTV of the police station, which seemed to have been designed so that three out of nine CCTVs not working. And Du Ke's plan now is to find a recording device that Kim gave to his police friend. And on the way, Du Ke get calls by the head of security. Because Du Ke was not coming to work, Du Ke reason if he is looking for food which of course the head of security angry and ordered Du Ki to go to the club as soon as possible in the club. The officer who didn't do his duties properly was punished, but not with Du Ki because Du Ki didn't know anything about the chaos sending the woman to the hotel. The female agent appears and is angry because of their VIP's client protest with the woman who should be taken to the hotel instead of being sent to the hospital. The agent who recognizes Du Ki's face was confused. The head of security also said that if Kim who took their woman to the hospital, the agent left and the head of security got a phone call. He asked two officers to record the chronology of Kim who beat them up during the delivery of the woman. The chairman then left and Du Ki followed him secretly. He has come into secret room that was not just anyone who could enter, until finally found another room with a monitor highlighted various sides of the club. And there were many lockers there. First Du Ki connected the computer, there then checked the locker, and found a note with a video. The club leader also now enters the secret room, also wants to enter the room. The chairman gets a message. Du Ki hears it, and when the chairman enters Du Ki has disappeared. He goes out without leaving a trace. Now Sung Chul and the team investigates the DVD that Du Ki brought, that contains his video of CCTV with the title Women's Names. All recordings are only the women who come out the club and enter the hotel room. Sung Chul believes the footage seems to be evidence to clear the club of all negative accusations. The only man on CCTV is Kim's friend who is the police. Soon, Du Ki gets a call from his agent and asks for help. Du Ki immediately comes to the agent, 
who knows if Duque is close to the artist who often comes to the club. She wants Duque apologize for the woman's failed delivery, the woman ordered by the artist, and sure if now the artist is angry. The agent asked Duque to call the artist to maintain the good name of the club. Duque agreed, and when he met the artist, he immediately made Duque the wound. But Duque still tried to relax, and the artist was confused with Duque who works at the club too. Duque immediately apologizes for the delivery incident, but the artist is increasingly upset and threatens the agent to enter and the artist's annoyance. Duque tries to explode. The agent immediately invites the artist to choose a doll again and makes sure that the doll will be free. The artist also chooses the female customer of the club there. And for the delivery, this artist Duque is responsible for delivering. The request must be obeyed. The agent then gave instructions for Duque to send the woman. Shortly, the woman in a semi-conscious state appeared. She is weak, and two officers asked Duque not to help anything. The woman was left walking alone past the camera. After that the officers approached, and arriving at the hotel, the officer whispered to the woman who was half-conscious, and then the woman by herself heading to the hotel room. Duque was still confused, Gomen also observed from afar, in her own room. The woman immediately lay on the mattress. Duque remembered Kim's talk when the woman delivered first. The woman would be harassed if Kim didn't interfere the delivery. After that Duque was asked to contact the artist, telling the location of the woman's room. The artist come and going to the room accordingly that Duque told. The artist also showed off his activities in the form of a group conversation. He seemed happy. And when he wanted to go home, Duque suddenly reasoned that he had a stomachache. The other officer allowed Duque to leave, which soon Duque returned to the hotel room. The artist also managed to get into the room. But when he wants to carry out his activities, the knocking sound sounded. Duque immediately attacks the artist until he is unconscious. After that tells Go Dian, and the two technicians disguised as hotel employees take the artist away, the helpless woman taken to the hospital. Now Sung Chul at a place asking about the orphanage. Sung Chul now is looking for someone named Ha Jun, and the woman there gives a lot of documents, hoping that Sung Chul can find a name Ha Jun he was looking for. While the artist now tortured by Du Ki, he is very scared, and Du Ki exposes the sins that the artist has been committing, choosing women and harassing them, considering them as games and showing off to others. The girl must be very scared, but the artist blames his agent who brought the women to him, but Duki didn't care. The artist remains guilty and Duki continues his game. Meanwhile, Hajun now meets with the female CEO and discusses the business, Hajun wanting the woman to provide 100 cake, making the female CEO shocked. Shortly, the senior police contacted and reported that if he would be one of the candidates for promotion as commissioner, he needed help from Ha Jun to ensure the position it will fall into his hands. Continue chatting with the female CEO. She knows that Bishop did ask for a lot, but 100 kilograms in her opinion is too much. So Ha Jun wants to add 200 cake. Ha Jun guarantees to secure the location and transportation. If there is a problem, Ha Jun will be fully responsible. Go and also now check the phone belonging to the artist who is apparently the director of the club. The artist is a key player, and there are always victims every night. Du Ki also has a plan. At night, the girls who have just entered the club are observed by the female agent who has asked the woman. The agent then approaches and offers drinks as their introduction. In the agent's ring, there is liquid and ask her woman target to drink. The agent then contacted by the number of the artist who wants to enter bringing VIP customer. The agent is obviously very happy because she would get paid so much. And then the officer reported the problem to the head of security. The head of security who wanted to check was surprised by the parents who came in. He was very confused. Outside, the parents wanted to enter the club. They paid for the VIP class. The head of security couldn't hold them. The parents were commanded by Sung Chul. Inside, the young people become uncomfortable. The old people now dominate the club. The head of security is very confused. The head of club also approached and didn't know what happened. The young people left and the head of the club asked for that nightclub to be closed. After that, they spoke to the agent who brought the elderly. The agent admitted that the artist asked to do it, and now the head of the nightclub so wants to cancel all meetings. He will make the club close temporarily on the grounds of internal evaluation. The agent is also told to pay all damages, which makes her upset because it is impossible for her to have that much money. The chairman also asked that the artist be contacted, no matter how. At the headquarters, Go Eun also identified CCTV footage if the woman who came to the hotel is faint, and when woke up, they would be with a strange man trying to report the police but it was useless. Their report was not responded because the CCTV showed evidence that the woman herself who came to the hotel, they are really angry, don't deserve to be called human people who did such heinous things. The next day, news about the police arresting a group of people trying to trade illegal drugs spread. Ha Jun is contacted by the female CEO, but Ha Jun ignores, and during eating, the female CEO comes upset.
She asks for an explanation regarding the police who arrested here illegal drugs, but Ha Jun remains relaxed and asks the female CEO to watch television, where the senior police officer who led the arrest said, if he will eradicate the illegal drug problem in Korea, the female CEO still doesn't understand, but Ha Jun promises to be responsible and asks the CEO to calm down. Meanwhile, Do Ki come late, and the senior officer immediately orders Do Ki to another room with gloves. Do Ki is confused and approaches the room that is currently the officers cleaning up the messy room. There is blood on the floor, and two police who Do Ki remembers as the officer who arrested him in the past. They are destroyed the evidence of the crime in the room, not even leaving a trace of the victim's blood. Go Eun also checked if it turned out that all reports of crimes that occurred in the nightclub were reported to the regional police station. Even defamation that attacked the nightclub will be handled by the police of the area too. That's why the club in the city center remains safe, because it works with police officers. After that, the head of security asks Do Ki to meet with the head of the club. Do Ki obey him. To Do Ki left to talk together. The leader of the nightclub then offered to drink to Do Ki, and asked Do Ki to finish the drink. The leader knew if Do Ki is a friend of the artist, but Do Ki admits that he can't contact the artist for now. Do Ki feels something is wrong with the drink given by the head of the nightclub, until his head is really dizzy. Do Ki doesn't move, and the head of the nightclub shows CCTV footage at the police station. When Kim released him first, the leader of the nightclub believes Do Ki has a relationship with Kim. Do Ki, who is in pain, then fell. After that, the head of the nightclub beat Do Ki, until Do Ki really didn't move anymore. The head of security then asked to get rid of Do Ki, Go Eun telling the two technicians if things happened to Do Ki, where Do Ki is now treated the same as the previous victim. He was ordered to walk alone through the CCTV camera. Do Ki not listening Go Eun's voice, and two technicians who were very panicked, Do Ki then fell. The officers then took him away with car. Go Eun and the two technicians followed from behind. Even the traffic light, they deliberately slashed so as not to lose track, it's just that Do Ki's position was missed. Go Eun so asked to be dropped there. Do Ki was given a whisper to get up and cross the road with a smile. Well, what Do Ki feels at this time, he is completely alone. The world is empty, and Do Ki with a smile even crossing the street. Do Ki stayed quite along in the middle of the street, almost hit. Go Eun come to save him, the head of security obviously annoyed. He then took over the car and wanted to hit Do Ki and Go Eun who were stopped by the two technicians. The crash occurred, the head of security still survived and escaped. The two technicians also survived and approached to Do Ki who hadn't awakened in his shadow. Do Ki is going to door that connecting to Sung Chul's house. There are two technicians and Go Eun who greeted Do Ki. Until finally, Do Ki woke up. Go Eun who accompanied Do Ki was confused. Do Ki has faint all day and claimed not to remember anything. Do Ki almost died, and the two technicians are also treated then asked Do Ki to remember slowly, starting with the last memory, until finally, Do Ki shows a pen-shaped recording device belonging to Kim. The scene then shows someone called Bishop just arrived in Korea, Ha Jun and other subordinate greeted him. Soon, the senior police come. Bishop then left followed by other subordinate. At night, Bishop led the worship of his subordinate in the church. All the people wear a ring. At the same time, Do Ki who still confused tried to remember, before, when the head of the nightclub gave a drink, Do Ki realized there was a pen. And when he wanted to drink again, Do Ki was too dizzy. Do Ki was annoyed, and sure that the drink was mixed with something, he dropped pens, and in a chance, he takes Kim's pen. And the pen then given to Kim, and immediately hearing all the conversations that had been recorded, starting when Kim gave the pen, and at night, when he wanted to check the club. Kim's police saw his friend drunk, and then Kim's police fiend paid by the officer. Kim's friend believed something was wrong. Until on the day of the destruction of the drug evidence, Kim's friend was told to go home first. There is other friend who will replace his duty, they are quite pushy, and two police officers immediately leave. Kim's fiend feels more wrong. He remembers Kim's previous talk if there is a drug trade in the nightclub. Kim's friend try to follow his friend secretly. Until at night, the police officer returns to nightclub and gives drugs that should have been burned. Kim's friend really annoyed. He just doesn't think that if the police who are supposed to be to eradicate crime, were the police itself involved in doing evil. Kim's friend then contacted Kim, only Kim could be trusted. But to prove what he saw was true, Kim's friend would make sure only once again, Kim's friend with a gun entered the club, and immediately pointing a gun at his friend. Kim's friend explains the savagery of his two police friends, but then he was beaten from behind. Two police officers admitted that being a police was not enough to become rich. The friend saw a pile of pens, and the head of the nightclub asked Kim's friend to be taken. Kim's friend fight back with a pen, but one against those many is useless. In the midst of defeat, Kim's friend put down his recording pen. Kim's friend believe after he left, there would be a man who hated sports who brought the crime of a police colleague, and that nightclub, 
the head of the nightclub then forced Kim's friend drinking. After that, Kim's friend came home in a daze. He was already influenced to go to his car and leave. So the next day, Kim found his friend dead. Kim obviously didn't expect that the incident to be very strange. And now Kim knows the true incident. Even after killing his friend, the police officer and the head of the nightclub are living easily, not feeling guilty or regretting their actions. Duki also said what Kim's friend said about a man who hated sports. Duki sure that the talk was directed at Kim and there was a purpose behind it. But Kim still doesn't understand. The next day, Bishop came to a meeting attended by Hajun and the senior police. They discussed about business and Hajun had also made sure the group that blocked them was no longer there. They would coordinate with each other so that their business successful. By Kim's side, he tried to interpret the message from his friend, until to remember that his friend suggested Kim to do sports. But Kim doesn't like sports. His friend still insists that he has even rented a special locker in Kim's name. So Kim immediately went to the fitness center and come to the locker in his name. Inside, there was a message from his friend reminding Kim of his friend. Kim couldn't hold back his tears. His friend kept a copy of the document just in case if his friend couldn't help again. He hoped Kim who will continue his struggle. After that, Kim comes to Duki and hands over documents belonging to his police friend. So on the day of death, two police officers changed the schedule of Kim's friend who was supposed to destroy drug evidence, but there was nothing suspicious. Even their activities were recorded as evidence very strict supervision, and even the severity, there should be no less or more than one gram. After carrying the goods to be burned, they come to the burning place, all put in the container, still recorded and burned. After finishing burning, they go home. And when the burning place was closed, two people come again. Apparently the prohibited items they bring are not burned because the container is fireproof. Those illegal goods was still intact and handed over to the head of the nightclub. The document then handed over to the team. Those illegal drugs has the same effect as dementia patients. When mixed with alcohol, they could not control the action and could only be programmed to perform simple commands, just like Duki used to do, which almost caused him to get hit. Sung Chul also knows if the drug is very dangerous, especially the club uses it to harass others. Everyone involved in the nightclub also has big name in Korea, from the CEO who want to avoid taxes, artists who want to have fun and unscrupulous parties from the government who work together to cover up the crimes that occurred. Du Ki so suggested that all perpetrators of crime involved was arrested at once. Hajun now is drinking with senior police and female CEO. The CEO is very happy that her illegal drugs are back. She doesn't expect and tested the good performance of Hajun and the senior police. The CEO knows why Bishop believed in Hajun so much. Because Hajun had the safest shipping route by cooperating with the police. But soon, another officer came to tell about their new officer whom they failed to take care of. The CEO knew the new officer with the number 9. First she ordered the nine, but never came to her. The agent also approached wanting to serve food. The police asked the nine to brought it, but the head of the club said that the number nine was no longer there. And before that, many guards had disappeared so they had to hire workers again. One of them is the number nine. But since the number nine joined them, many strange things have happened. The number nine claims to be the artist's friend. Now the artist cannot be contacted. The delivery of women to the hotel has also failed. And in the past, there were also elderly people who entered the nightclub. Hajun wanted to know the number 9 they were talking about. The photo is also shown that the CEO was sure that the number 9 was what she used to want to meet. But Hajun and the police were surprised because Du Ki was still alive. They didn't expect and Hajun leave immediately. The troops were deployed to come to the taxi headquarters to find Du Ki's whereabouts. But they found nothing. Hajun panicked enough. He then meet Bishop and asked for their event to be postponed. Hajun believes something bad will happen. But Bishop still wants no change. If they encounter a problem, it means that Hajun is not a person who can be trusted with his responsibilities. Hajun only could obey him. Another day, Sung Chul got a call from Du Ki. They have arranged a plan. Go Eun and two technicians also now get a call from their pager. And then they leave after that, they are going to the headquarters and Du Ki seems happy. One day before Bishop's event begins, the police will burn the evidence of illegal drugs. Hajun looks uneasy. And what happens in the field there are no suspicious signs. Until the police get a report if there is a road that is being repaired. Hajun remains asked to pass the proper path. Two people still drove away. There was nothing strange. Even after that, the drugs that had been burned they could still take them. They took them to the club. And Hajun doesn't understand. There is something strange, because everything going very well. The police asked Hajun to calm down. But Hajun still felt something was wrong. And on the day of Bishop's event, at the nightclub, the guest club who can enter only certain guests, mostly from abroad and no bishop, they trade drugs to the guests a lot of money they receive, and guests clue to get their goods. Two technicians also disguised as guests. 
On the other side, the senior police gets a call from his subordinate. The situation in the club is not okay. The CEO come to Hajun annoyed because the illegal drug at hand was apparently flour. The CEO felt played, but everyone there didn't know what happened. Even the police who delivered also didn't know anything. Suddenly the guests are unconscious. They consumed the same drink that Duki used to consume. The CEO was sure that Hajun and the whole person in the club betrayed her. The police didn't accept that but he fell too. The CEO then asked her subordinate to kill everyone in the club. The fight happened. Hajun still doesn't understand. He was confused. In the middle of the chaos, the disco music turned on. Du Qi appeared on the second floor facing Ho Jun, who now doesn't expect that the mastermind of chaos inside is Du Kai. So one day before, Du Kai watching senior police who told reporters that the illegal drugs they found, worth 200 keg, would first be burned. Du Qi had checked the document given by Kim before. So then after the police handed over the drugs and left, two technicians disguised to be police pretended to want to return the notes that the officers accidentally brought, the officer would accompany. On the way, the two technicians took the key and duplicated it. And when they came home, the key was returned. They also installed an outboard device and then leave. Go and then acted. And at night, do key and two technicians would act. They would exchange the actual illegal drugs for the ones they brought. Go and also helped disable the CCTV. After that, they immediately exchanged the illegal drugs with flour. Even equalized the weight should not be more or less and finished. They are immediately go home. And the next day, the police took those illegal drugs to burn. And now the illegal drugs that should have been burned were the senior police place who now afraid contacted Hajun. Hajun getting annoyed to Du Ki. The police then come to the club. Hajun gives an appreciation to Du Ki and ensures that if on another occasion, Du Ki will die in his hands. Hajun leave. The police came and immediately secured everyone inside the club. The media highlighted five people named as the main suspects in the crime case that occurred at the club, including the artist, news media directly reporting on organized crime involving artists, businessmen and state officials. In trial, judge decides four people sentenced to life in prison. They certainly blame each other and feel their lives are unfair. While the artist will be sentenced to 10 years, the senior police is also now on the wanted list. He is scared and confused as to what to do. He asked Hajun to do something. The senior police is sure that if anyone betrayed them, Hajun then tied up the police's neck and said that if that is the way he would clean up the mess. Before the police got a new position, the police was killed. The next day, Kim is happy that the crime of the club was exposed, and the death of his friend will be reinvestigated. Although the done by Du Ki is illegal, Kim is very grateful. Nam will return to coverage, but he still has to pay the cost of luxury taxi services, which is not cheap. After that, Kim said if Du Ki's actions are indeed illegal, but at least fair enough, Du Ki then left. Kim returned to being a reporter and broadcast the news live about the death of his friend. He also asked in order for the public to continue to monitor the case so that the perpetrators do not get away with light sentences. Tu Ki then turned off the taxi service at night. Hajun meet Bishop and said that if he had planned for the case to end up with the senior police, he made sure that the senior police would be found dead by suicide. But Bishop remained upset. He would take care of Hajun too. Bishop said if Hajun lost to Du Kai, because Hajun is too arrogant will win. Hajun asked to be given a chance once again. And Bishop also lets Hajun live. Ha Jun vows to make sure Duki dies. In other time, some Chul gets a call from someone who needs a luxury taxi service. Duki immediately picks up the person. Duki asks the person to tell his story. Well, that person is the bishop who cries. And the scene moved to in a place called the welfare house. Bishop, who was still young, had a list of children's names along with photos and identities. He then destroyed it. Until one child then fell on the tees by other children, were called as children who didn't have the name. Bishop then told to be get closer because something happened. One of the children who was slamming was killed by a child who didn't have name. The dead child named Hajun and could not be saved. The ambulance and the police came. This police is a senior police when he was young. Bishop changed the chronology of the case of the child's death slipping while playing alone. The police obey him. Bishop then approached the murderous child who claimed not to remember his own name. Bishop then calmed down and didn't blame the child's actions. Bishop said that if the cause of the child who died because he was weak and could not compete, according to Bishop, being weak was wrong. And from now, Bishop will give the child the name Hajun, who will not be weak and will win the fight. Bishop took care of Hajun until adulthood and made Hajun to be his killer machine who always could do anything. Hajun also never failed to do his duty. In another murder, Bishop gives the ring as a gift. People will help Hajun with the ring. Shortly, the senior police arrive. He wears the ring as well. Bishop explains that the man who has just died is a father who is looking for his child. But because he can't found his child, the man jumped over the building. 
The police also thanked to Bishop, which made him get promoted. After that, Hajun and Bishop left, and in the present, the special bishop's ring, Sung Chul show it to the other team. After Dookie realized the criminals they eradicated so far, the leader wearer rings from the Vietnam case, nightclubs, to Kang the fraudster, don't know what happened, but they believe the people wearing the ring collaborated to commit crimes, and the ringmaker must be the mastermind. In a different places, a man checked the foreign currency transaction records, all the illegal transactions he found that led to two overseas companies that had the same logo. After submitting a report, the man who referred to him as a witness wanted to go home, but was hit by another man who was even distracted and seemed to do deliberately because he doesn't accept being hit. The witness pushed the man who was even injured and confessed if he was stabbed by a knife. The witness was obviously panicked. He doesn't carry a knife at all. And the person who was seen immediately contacted police. At the same time, Bishop now saw the entire pyramid of crime that was dismantled by Sung Chol's group, and his subordinate came to tell that their witnesses had been arrested and demanded. The subordinate provides stickers of luxury taxi services, which made Bishop immediately contacted. Do key, and picked up Bishop who tell if his child was arrested by the police because accused of injuring people on the parking lot, the child in prison, and asked Do key to help him. Sung Chol and the team then hear the story of Bishop, who claimed to be the father of the witness who was previously defamed. Bishop said that the witness's life was in danger, and for what Go Yun knows, the witness is the leader foreign currency transaction teams, and would attend the trial as witnesses next week. The suspicious transaction record was also noted the names they recognized. Sung Chol sure that after the nightclub collapse, the people behind it were still trying to hide the remaining money with various efforts and they are all sure if there is someone would prevent the witness from coming to the trial, because they believe the witness was really in a threatened state. They agreed to help Bishop, do key, and the team rushed to start a luxury taxi service. While previously, Sung Chol visiting the body of a senior police who was declared suicidal. Sung Chol remembered that if previously contacted by a senior police who was trapped and could not avoid his crime anymore, he contacted Sung Chol and claimed that someone else told him he would help Sung Chol catch the mastermind of all the crime that occurred but asked Sung Chol to get him out of the problem at hand. And as proof, if Sung Chol could believe him, Sung Chol could come to the archive room of the prosecutor office. But then the police was killed by Ha Jun, Sung Chol, then seeing the senior police wearing a ring that was quite familiar. The day changed. Du Ki managed to register as a temporary criminal prisoner from other prisons. They are helped by Hana. And from what Go Yun knows, the witness is in cell room number three. Unfortunately, Du Ki may not necessarily be able to enter the cell, because it all depends on the policy of the warden. Luckily, the two technicians apparently become transfer prisoner too, to help Du Ki get a greater chance of being able to share a room with the witness. Go Hyun hopes that the two technicians will not be troublesome Du Kai, one technician who was afraid of being drawn tattooed, which made the other technician say that the technician would be scared by other prisoners. After that, the division of cells began. Du Ki and two technicians are in different cells room. The technician drawn tattooed was placed the same cell room as the witness's cell. He then entered his cell and met other terrible prisoners, hoping not disturbed by showing tattoos. But the tattoos were apparently from the gang that used to kill their boss. So the prisoners there tried to attack the technician. The other technicians also managed to win the hearts of the old prisoners by feeding and singing mother songs. While Du Kai felt that the prisoner of his cell room had gestures to attack him, Du Ki observed quite a detail and after explained his observations, they also took out their weapons and asked Du Qi to introduce himself carefully. Du Qi emphasized that if he doesn't want to make trouble, but the talk was even mistaken for joking. Du Qi also immediately attacked them, four against one be able one by Du Qi. The officer who checked was confused, Du Qi was politely awakened, and is now become the person who responsibility of the room. While Sung Chul, after a meeting at the prosecutor office discussing the Blue Bird Foundation, Sung Chul immediately going to the archive room and checked the files according to the instructions of the senior police previously. Sung Chul managed to find documents belonging to senior police officers about some crimes that were manipulated. One of the documents was about a list of names of children in called place the welfare house. Sung Chul take it. In jail during meal hours, the tattooed technician became his cellmate's errand. He then approached Du Qi and his technician friend and annoyed because the tattoo on his hand was what made him an errand from what the technician knew. At this time, the witness was in the health unit because of the injured. The perpetrator who made the witness injuries were all prisoners. Because there was a bet about the day death of the witness, they are being worried. Don't know how much longer the witness will stay in prison. Du Qi also has a plan to create a protection system for witnesses. Du Qi will become psychopathic and start messing up that place. He acts casually and deliberately looking for trouble, and everyone becomes overwhelmed and tries to attack Du Qi. But Du Kai still wins the fight. After that, 
Duke Yi became feared by other prisoners, he became the master of the prison and was treated like a king. Duke Yi's axe is really like a madman and other prisoners preferred to avoid rather than deal with Duke Yi. Then two technicians reported that the witness had come out but was disturbed by other prisoners. The two technicians also tell if Duke Yi known as a psychopath. No one wants to deal with Duke Yi, who will actually be used by Duke Yi as best as possible. Duke Yi immediately approached the witness and considered the witness as his friend. The other prisoners so left in annoyance. In other time, Duke Yi came to a prison cellar who smuggled goods from outside. Du Kitty then asked the person to provide the goods that he wanted. The seller refused, but because he was afraid of Du Ki, he would try it. Outside, the smuggler was visited by Go Eun who gave Du Ki's orders. After that, Go Eun leave. In prison again, Du Ki approached to the witness so confused why Du Ki was kind to him. Du Kai then gave pepper spray so that the witness is on guard, when Du Kai was not around. At different times, Du Ki feeling strange because in that prison, everything looks very smooth, there is no significant threat to witnesses. Meanwhile, Sung Chul now comes to the bishop's place according to documents from the senior police, the place apparently the welfare house. Sung Chul entered alone, no one greeted him, Sung Chul checked around, and saw there is picture of Hajun with bishop, Sung Chul, no if bishop doesn't really want to use their luxury taxi service. Sung Chul then attacked and made him faint, Du Ki, two technicians and the witnesses now will be transferred again, they are out of prison. The witness thanks to Du Ki for guarding him in prison. Du Ki then asked the witness not to miss the date the trial, the warden chief enters and says if Du Kai can't leave. Du Ki must return to the prison cell, two technicians protest. Gan Yun realized that someone changed Du Ki's exit date. Du Ki then obeyed and made sure everything would be fine. But Du Ki realized that if the warden chief wearing a familiar ring, Du Ki also knew if something went wrong. Hajun was behind the scenes and observed casually. Du Kai re-entered his cell and the other prisoners prepared again to attack Du Ki. Du Ki read the strangeness, and while asleep, the prisoners ready with weapons, but Du Ki immediately started the fight. Du Kai still won the fight and wanted to know who the person who ordered them. The defense also said if there is a prize which is a lot if it's be able to carry in Du Ki's head, until sounded Hajun's voice. Du Ki approaches and Hajun gives the witnesses belongings that Du Ki had previously given. Hajun continue. If the bus carrying the witness and two technicians to the court were get crash. Previously, after Du Ki get out of the bus, there was an officer who beat the witness and two technicians. Now Du Ki took the spray and quite upset with Hajun who is happy. Hajun says that if Golian he brings two, Du Ki so ask his friends to be released because the fight that occurs is only between Du Ki and Hajun. But Hajun doesn't want to do it. Hajun will make Du Ki suffer. Du Ki has destroyed all operations that took a long time. Hajun planned it. Hajun didn't accept that his plan was destroyed and will make Du Ki pay for it. Du Ki threatens to kill Hajun if his friends are injured. Hajun will give Du Ki a chance to save the others by meeting him at 12 ohms clock, but the condition is that Du Ki must be able to survive. Hajun leaves contentedly. 12 ohms clock begins. All the warden officers run Hajun's order. Du Ki's cell room also open. Hajun from his room, then open the cell room of other who now be ready to attack Du Ki with sharp weapons. The resistance was still not much. Hajun opened another room, which still Du Ki won. Hajun also opened the entire room at once, so that the fight that Hajun noticed became more exciting. Hajun quite enjoyed the fighting that occurred, and Du Ki was quite overwhelmed. One against many were so many people in the hallway, making Du Ki have his own tactics. He brought people into his cell, until finally Du Ki could beat everyone up. Du Ki was injured, but he won. Du Ki continued to step knitting. Hajun still enjoying happily, because on the other side of the prison, there were still other prisoners that Du Ki had to fight. Sung Chul also now awakened in Bishop's place, and then invited by Bishop to eat together. Well, behind Bishop, there are many photos of people who have been passed away. Bishop then questioned the documents that Sung Chul got, but Sung Chul even explained that Bishop was just a cover. Bishop is not a religious leader, but a kidnapper and murderer of children who were caught off guard when not with their parents. Bishop casually said that the place where Sung Chul rested was the place where they burned the children who has been passed away. Bishop said he actually only wanted to help the government clean up the filthy society, but was instead sentenced to prison by the government. Sung Chul get upset because Bishop guiltlessly displayed photos of the murdered people behind him like a trophy that could be proud. The photos of witnesses were also displayed. Sung Chul wanted to know if Bishop made up all the stories while in a luxury taxi. Bishop explained from what Hajun said the luxury taxi service is quite detailed, so Bishop must provoke a real case, illegal transactions of foreign currency are indeed Bishop's crime. But Bishop still will not be arrested because the witness is no longer there. Bishop also proud to Hajun, which he thinks that Hajun is an extraordinary worker, 
more than just a child, there is nothing better than Hajun until Duki appears. But now, Bishop will see how Hajun can deal with Dukai. Now Duki succeeds in Hajun's office with various wounds. Hajun is very impressed, and as his last gift, Hajun shows video footage of Go In and the two technicians who are held captive. Hajun asks Duki to choose who is the person who must be killed first. Duki paused. Hajun wants to know who among his friends is the priority of Dukai. Hajun wants Duki feels how hope can disappear and forgotten. Duki also said that even if he dies, others will definitely still remember and take revenge on Hajun. From that memory, separated people, whether it's adults, children, family, even friends can be reunited. From a memory that the truth can be revealed, and even Duki can appear in front of Hajun because of memory, but Hajun still doesn't matter. Duki has five seconds to choose. Duki is seeing the time is 01 ohms clock. Duki also confidently chose number four, which is Hajun. Hajun annoyed because Dukai still had time to joke. Shortly, the warden chief displayed news about the witness who finished being a witness in the trial of illegal transactions of important currency. His testimony was accepted, and Hajun is very unexpected. Even, there are two technicians who made Hajun not understand and confusion. Well, previously, Duki reported that his job was to look after the witness too easy. Sung Chul came to tell if in fact they were all framed. The warden and the prison was bought by the people with a ring. Go Lian certainly worried and asked Duki to get out of prison immediately. But Sung Chul said that if the witness is the real victim, the safety of the witness must come first. And Duki has a plan to bring the witness to court and testify. But they must make the gang focus on them, even risk their own lives. And on the day of liberation, when Duki and the others were about to board the bus, Duki gave the marrow paprika spray. Sung Chul also came to Bishop's place. When the two technicians and Go untied up, the technician sprayed peppers. And after that they are able to escape. Go Yun also had plain to recording them. So that now their plan was to trick Hajun and the gang succeeded. Hajun get upset. He doesn't accept for losing. Take a gun of the warden chief. Point the gun to Duki and shot him. The warden gets orders from the bishop and Hajun then points the gun at Duki, but the shot is stopped. Hajun brought to leave. Bishop has ordered the warden chief to confine Hajun in the punishment room. After that, Duki is returned to prison in isolation and could not leave, but at least he managed to guarantee the safety of the witnesses. Well, six years ago, Hajun and other subordinate welcomed Bishop who had just come out of prison after being sentenced for two years. They then gathered. Bishop explained that God had given him revelation if they would rise up and change the world. Bishop only asked that the people present remember, if he who accommodates them all, he is also the one who gives positions in various institutions like now. Now Hajun is faced with Bishop who is upset because all this time he has been giving Hajun a chance. But Hajun still asks for one more chance. Bishop wants his ring returned and then Hajun brought to leave. Now Hajun is put in prison across Duki's place. Hajun promised that if he got out of prison, he would kill Duki and everyone related to Duki. Hajun's angry were very passionate, but Duki doesn't really respond. Then Sung Chol who was still in Bishop's place left food because Bishop still going to take care of Hajun's failure. Sung Chol then asked Bishop's subordinate to cut the meat because he felt very tired on occasion. Sung Chol attacked Bishop's subordinate and then took his cell phone and ran away with Bishop's picture. When he was about to go out, it is impossible for Sung Chol to win against Bishop's subordinate. So Sung Chol decided to pretend to call as if Bishop's and left with his car. The subordinate realized too late and Sung Chol managed to going back to the base safely. Ko Inun then told if it's now. Duki is not be able to contact it, it is maybe that Duki's communication battery ran out, Go Lian also has a way to give the battery without being caught. Go Lian goes to the smuggler and asks for help. The battery reaches Duki, and after that, Duki can connect again with the team at headquarters, Duki claiming to be injured, but it's still fine. Go Lian wants to make escape plan, refused by Duki. According to Duki, the warden involved in the crime would be good if they publicize the crime. Duki also believes that if Bishop's place is not far from the prison, Duki has plans to corner Bishop's group. Duki wants to go Yun, and the two technicians investigate the foreign currency transaction report submitted by the witness. Duki will close the source of the money. Sung Chol will also take care of other matters. They have their own tasks and then begin to strategize from their respective places. They gather the information they have about the Bishop's largest source of funds and from Kang's property, Black Sun Nightclub two foreign currency transaction companies and source of money in Vietnam. Even after witnesses successfully reported the source of funds of the previous two companies, there are still a few companies left. It is impossible for them to close them all. So Duki only focuses on the companies that are most connected to overseas companies. The company is Antiques, and two technicians are assigned to steal Antiques before auctioning. 
With that, they could stop the flow of money. Two technicians left. They disguised themselves as pickups of antiques to be delivered to the auction venue. And after the goods were successfully moved, they left. The original car just come, making the officer confused. After that, they will stop the money loan company. Go Inun will take care of it and undercover as a socialite who wanted to borrow $100. Thought if joking, the officer was a bit annoyed and Go Inun distracted because secretly the computer hacked by her because it didn't find the stamp. Go Un didn't so borrow money and leave. Go Inun back to the car and annoyed with her heavy bag, there is a tool that could erase documents where the officer borrowers confused by their documents that are all missing. Bishop also got a report that many of their companies had not transferred money. Bishop is quite upset and asked Duque to bring to him. Sung Chol is also now in prison and brings Hajun and Bishop's picture with Bishop. Sung Chol then contacts Go Yun and wants to visit Hajun alone. Go Yun worried, but Sung Chol asks Go Yun not to worry. Before leaving, Sung Chol looks at his old cell phone and in prison, the warden chief then takes Duque out. Sung Chol also now meets Hajun who is quite confused. But anyway, with Sung Chol's arrival, makes it easier for Hajun to bring Sung Chol to Bishop. Hajun can save his pride in front of Bishop, and Sung Chol give the documents. At least, Hajun should know the truth. Outside, the two technicians and go on another car coming. Duki was also reunited with Bishop and didn't expect to meet the passengers of his luxury taxi. Bishop underestimated Duki too much and regretted not finishing off Duki sooner. The impact now is Bishop has a lot of losses. Duki wants to predict if Bishop will pay a high for what he had done. But Bishop didn't want to be outdone made a prophecy as well. Bishop made a scenario if Duki escaped from prison and was shot and dead by officers who found him. Duki's death would be tragic, like his mother. Duki did not accept his mother being implicated, wanting to attack. But Bishop blew a whistle that made Duki have a panic attack. He remembered the incident of his mother being killed first. Duki did not attack back and beaten. Bishop very happy because it was quite easy to fight Duki. Bishop then asked the warden chief to take care of Sung Chol who visited Hajun as well. Duki was taken away. He was in the same car as Sung Chol who was also unconscious. Two technicians who confused and immediately followed the departure of the car. At the church, Bishop and his subordinate gathered to discuss the funds that did not reach their accounts again. They were also under investigation. They could not bear the loss and asked for a solution. The commotion made Bishop ask everyone to calm down. Bishop wanted to be respected for the wealth and office of all those who came to the place. Cause of Bishop's help, Bishop made sure that they would not face difficulties. Soon, the warden chief appeared telling the car of two technicians followed Du Ki and Sung Chol's car. So after that, Bishop ordered to arrest Sung Chol and his entourage at once. Until finally, the car of two technicians was trapped. They could not leave and were forced to get off their cars. All of them then obey him. Meanwhile, Hajun now read the documents brought by Sung Chol previously, where the content was a poster more than 10 years ago. Sung Chol met Hajun's parents. At Bluebird Foundation, they reported Hajun who disappeared taken by someone. During this time, Hajun's parents searched for Hajun and even stopped working to find Hajun. Every year, the poster of his disappearance was updated, even predicted his face when he was 19 years old. Seeing a photo of his parents, Hajun even more unexpectedly. From the story of Sung Chol, Hajun's father got an odd accident. Ha Jun remembered about the accident, where a man called because he would be promised to meet his child. Until soon, Ha Jun appeared and pushed that man to fall. The person who killed by Ha Jun was his own father. Previously, his father met with Bishop who according to people around. His son's face was in Bishop's place. Ha Jun then realized, after killing his father, Bishop appeared and entrusted Ha Jun with giving him a ring. Ha Jun still remembers if Bishop reported the death because the man jumped from the building because he didn't find his son. Hajun obviously very upset and emotional. Meanwhile, Go Lian and the two technicians are taken to a place with Sung Chol and Du Ki who was unconscious. Bishop's subordinate prepared to kill Sung Chol and his team. A shot ready to explode, they are very scared. But then a luxury taxi car came and attacked the gunman. The driver is a woman and shot all the criminals. Du Ki who is conscious also helped. Two technicalities and Go Lian are really confused. Sung Chol greeted the arrival of that woman. So before, Sung Chol contacted that woman with his old mobile phone. The woman in Japan also immediately left. Sung Chol is very grateful and introduced the woman as the first driver of the luxury taxi Blue Bird Foundation. And Go Eun, the two technicians are even more unexpected. While Bishop came to the Hajun and explained the current situation which chaos. Bishop also brought up that if Hajun is his favorite son who has never done anything wrong. Bishop will still punish Hajun responsibly and bestow all the chaos that occurs. The warden reports the problem and then is shot. There must be a reason. If the warden wants to live, 
Ha Jun then speaks. He will be responsible and accept the punishment, as long as Bishop can bring him to Du Kai. Ha Jun wants to kill Du Qi with his hand and end their hostility. Back to Sung Chol, he gets a call from Ha Jun that Du Qi took it. Ha Jun wants to be the client of a luxury taxi service. After that, the female driver gives the car keys, Go Hyun, and the two technicians so will accompany Du Qi to face their last client. The female driver let them go. She will clean up the mess on that place. Du Qi and his team depart. Ha Jun is waiting on the rooftop of the prison. Du Qi who just arrived was immediately greeted by Bishop's subordinate. Du Qi was escorted to the rooftop and faced with Ha Jun. They were both locked up and will be a spectacle for their fight. Du Qi and Ha Jun will end it all. Bishop then appears and wants to see death in person. Bishop also pulls out his gun. Ha Jun and Du Qi then starts the fight. In the fight their energy are balanced because Du Qi is also injured. But finally Du Kai still wins the fight, and Ha Jun realizes for what Du Qi's talk first. If some things must be remembered in order to get it back. Ha Jun regrets that he didn't in the past met a luxury taxi service, because he believed his life would definitely change from his current life. Du Qi also said Ha Jun's real name, that is Do Wu. Bishop then approached with his gun. Ha Jun say thanks, because Du Kai accepting his case. So previously, Ha Jun wants Du Qi found his name again. Ha Jun then wanted to end the fight and Bishop who was ready to shoot Ha Jun directly faced him. Ha Jun pushed Bishop to the ground. They both lost. Bishop who made Do Wu as Ha Jun now over is over. The history of Ha Jun's memory has emerged. During this time, Go Yun, two technicians, Sung Chul and Du Qi received his presence very well. The warden chief also now is afraid of Bishop who fell. With the other subordinate they ran away. The alarm sound in the church also rang. People there couldn't get out, and there were gas, smoke thrown by two technicians. The warden who wanted to leave the prison also couldn't because everything was locked. Sung Chul and team had taken over the situation from behind the scenes. Du Qi then appeared and started attacking. In short, Du Qi managed to survive. In the snow who came down and was tired of fighting. Du Qi to get out of prison, and the four of his friends were waiting. Now they would be the drivers and deliver Du Qi to go home. All bishops subordinate had been put in prison. They then left. Du Qi wanted to be taken to a place that gave happiness, Go Yun knowing where is that place, the car drove. One year later, still snowing, and luxury taxi service still operating, at night, Go Yun had returned to the same rental which same ace Du Qi, and then they enjoyed the night and drank together while gazing at the city and telling stories. News emerged of the sexual harassment the female surgeon had suffered at the military base, but after reporting the crime, a month later she ended her life after being threatened and reconciled. Du Qi now comes to the military place and will investigate the case. Du Qi will join the military division from December 2023. The person in the room whispered and said if Du Qi tried to dig out the truth, then they would bury the corpse again. Then Du Qi look around. There is also a female surgeon who is respectful to Du Qi. But Du Qi ignored her and left. After that, at the base, Du Qi hurry up assisted by Go Nun and two technicians. 